Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by my personal favorite on it. For all your sports supplements, from the uh, the new whey protein, the Dolce, that Mexican chocolate is fucking delicious, to the Alpha Brain, to the Shroom Tech, on it is number two to nobody. You understand me? They're number one. They don't fuck around. Go to onit.com right now and press in. Church. Bam. And get 10% off your first order delivered right to your house. That's how we roll. Number two, you know me, dog. I'm no fucking uh, Eddie Bravo, but I try to do what I do twice a week just to keep the blood flowing. I'm an old man. People tug on my fucking gi and close guard. Listen, if you want a tough, solid gi, you're a big guy. Fuji all the way, baby, from the all-purpose gi to their competition gis. In my world, it's Fuji all the way. Go to Fuji Sports right now, fujisports.com right now, and press in. Church. Boom. And get 10% off again. Whatever gi, the Superito, the Psycho Point Two, the, the Psycho, S-E-I-K-O Point Two, they redid it, or just the regular Elevate. It's a beautiful light gi. On hot days, they'll rock your world. Go to fujisports.com right now and press in. Church. Bam. Get 10% off your order. Kick this motherfucking mule Lee. Are you fucking Uh-oh. nuts or what? Old school Def Leppard still on the fucking road doing that thing. I got the, the, the name of the song is Woman. It's off the Hysteria album. Uh, and the reason why I opened up with this is because my main woman is in the fucking studio. Oh, I love Kate you. Quigley. I miss you. Christ Quill, I miss you too. I, really <laughs> I was worried about you. Did you ever hook up with the guy in Charlotte? The guy in Charlotte. Yeah, oh, Mike. yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about setting some dates up. Okay. We're just great it out. guy. Yeah. really yeah. wanted to use your great club, Charlotte. That's dope. Yeah, he was talking zone. about doing a few, like doing a run and hitting a few clubs. Yeah, he's got, yeah. He's got a South Carolina. Yeah. It's a couple days. So yeah, it'd be so good. fun. Be good, yeah. I love it out there. He wanted to get you out there. How yeah. are you? I missed you, man. I missed you Wasn't too, it so. weird? I was saying it was only like a few weeks I didn't see you, but it felt like forever. I just talked to you so much, and I, I take for granted that I bump into you like once or twice a week, so... It felt, it was weird. I was like, it was like, you're like one of my closest friends. Like I realized it when I wasn't seeing you. I was like, oh, I need like a hug from Joey. And yeah, no, it's yeah. weird. Listen, the comedy game doesn't give you uh, a lot of friends. Like, Not like real ones. I saw Ari and it was great. That's yeah. Great. I went with the cactus with Ari. And, oh, that's cool. Wait, know, what's cactus? That a the restaurant? taco place. Oh, nice. Steve Simone showed up. I go, see, hey, this is the cactus you should have gone to. That's hilarious. The other day he was bad mouthing cactus. I'm like, dog, <laughs> you went to the wrong fucking cactus. Really? Yeah, because there's three of them. There's Where one, is it? There's one on Beverly, up there in the valley. There's one on Moore Park and Tahunga, and then there's one on North Vine. Oh, they're all in the valley. No, oh, one Vine in and Hollywood. Oh. Yeah, across from the hotel. So sometimes if you're coming home from the store. Just hook a fucking right on Vine and they're open. It's cash only. I'll have to try it. Like Matty Egner lives in that neighborhood. A bunch of cats live in that neighborhood. Yeah. They, they know about. So the other day we were at Coffee and Steve Simone was complaining about fucking. Uh, the one in Moore Park and Woodman. Moore, Moore Park and Woodman. So today when he came over, Ari, I go, what do you want to eat? And he goes, I want to eat Mexican. I go, I only go to Cactus. Or like if it's family, I take them to the best is right up the corner here, but you can't get a table. What's that? Salsa and beer. Oh, yeah. I've never been there. I oh, love Mexican. Mexican oh. is my favorite. If I'm going out to eat, Mexican. The problem with salsa and beer, it's like fucking that restaurant. And, uh, you know, the other day, Lee and I were having coffee, talking about the podcast, and Stamone, and I'm like, I feel like pastrami. Like, I could get three ounces of pastrami with two pieces of bread, <laughs> and it's like uh, six Weight Watcher points, or eight Weight Watcher points. <laughs> <laughs> with, with mustard, with the coleslaw, it's not bad. It's like three points for coleslaw. Only wait, two pieces of bread and still under six. It's four six points, points for two wow. pieces of rye bread. It's two. How many do you get in a day? Thirty nine. Oh wow! I can't believe it's that low. So two bread. pieces of bread is four points, and three ounces of pastrami lean is like four points. Something fucking outrageous. <laughs> so I went to this pastrami place. It was god awful. It was god awful, and it's it's always been fifty fifty. I can't lie to you. I go there for convenience. The guy's a generic gambler, but his wife is really sweet. She's 60. She's got the ass of a 30-year-old. The wife. <laughs> yeah. She's Jewish, too, and she's fucking banging. Really? She's one of those dark-skinned Jews, one of those fucking desert Jews. <laughs> Sephardic Jews. Desert Sephardic Jews. Jews. She's fucking banging. She's got an ass of a 30-year-old. Really? And I went in there the other day. The, mother, the wife wasn't there, but the food was horrendous. <laughs> it was just god-awful. 
So there's a place downtown. If you ever want real fucking pastrami, it's called Langers. Do I sound? Do, do I strike you as someone that's looking for pastrami? Not upon really. Right now? Not really. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think I've ever in my life been like, I could really go for pastrami. Oh, my pastrami. God. But they, it's like an old, it's like, do you like Cantor's? Yeah. Okay, it's Cantor's only high level with a line. Oh, so I So if like you that. get there at 20 to 12, sorry, Charlie, it's a 30-minute wait. Done. So you got to go at 11.15 when the pastrami comes out of the oven. Mm. You got to get there at 5 after 11 and wait to 10 minutes. Like a soldier, just have a cup of rice, <laughs> chicken and rice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a couple of chicken and rice is three points. You know, you don't die. I love you. I love you on the point system so much. Oh, I love it. It's I love so it. great. And you look, it's working. It's, like no, I gained weight because something's going on. That's why I went to the doctor today because something ain't right. You did? I don't. You don't look well. I couldn't. Something's I mean, you're still so on. thin. Compared I'm trying to, to fucking get down to two sixty five. What? How much weight did you gain back? Like a couple, th- three pounds. That's it. It's and nothing. then I lost one point six. So it's like I'm up one and a half. Something ain't digesting. Something I'm slipping with something. Could be the expired edibles. No, you want me to tell you what it is? It's it's the greenhouse. I go to a natural fruit place, the greenhouse, and yeah. I love it. It's delicious and it's really healthy. But that stuff blended kills you. What do you mean? Like, like smoothies? Like, like acai. Yeah. Why? Too it's many a, carbs? Too many points? What do you mean? It's hard to count. Fruit blended and fruit eaten raw is two different, Very different. types of fruit. That's true. So fruit eaten raw, you could eat it all day long and not gain an ounce. But fruit blended becomes something else. Oh, you know what? So when you put banana, blueberries, and acai blended up, it becomes sugar. Sugar. Yeah, you're right. And then you put the fruit and the granola on top. Even though it's super light granola, granola is a lot of points. It's like eight points for a fucking. It's heavy. It's heavy. So, and I'm a big fucking uh, kombucha dude. Oh, you love kombucha. That's so, a lot of sugar, that's too, That's a lot though. of sugar. So it says eight ounces is two points, but I'll drink 16 ounces. Yeah, it's a lot. To keep the, your belly good. You it's know, a lot we're eating of edibles and shit, expired edibles. You should just do apple cider vinegar instead. Just I've heard about shots that. You it. like that? I do it. I do it. It's supposed to help keep... I'm, like, really into... It's weird. I'm really into, like, food and dietetics. I almost majored Well, I do that. the green shit. Every, every, every time I go to the greenhouse, I order... The uh, the fucking Kale. green, the, the, yeah, the whole thing. It's like it they got some great juices there. They really yeah. do. Because when I buy the juices, I actually look to see how many. Because sometimes there's one apple, sometimes there's a half an apple. Like yeah, you look, look, you have to look, right? But you know what? Not to do like an ad for them, but I used to be obsessed with making smoothies, and I tried all the different blenders, the Nutribullet, the Vitamix for real. Is amazing. amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, because you can put a whole apple in it. I eat the core of the seeds. When it's oh. blended up, I, you can't even tell. You can't tell you're getting... I, I sound like I'm doing an ad for them. You get all but the you get nutrients. You yeah. Get it's like when you find out that the best part of a potato was the peel. Yeah, like and I would get, put like, that. red potato. Like a friend of mine, we were talking about a restaurant. Yeah. Me and your girlfriend. What's her name? Oh, Jessica. Who I love to death. Yeah, she's awesome. You know, we were talking about a restaurant in Boulder that I, I really came up with them. Like, it's really weird when you come up with somebody. Yeah. When I was starting to go to that restaurant, nobody really went to that restaurant. And after I started going there because of the owner, and then we ended up in the halfway house together, his personality blew the place up. Yeah. Like him being in the halfway house and the word got on the street. Like, people like that. They wanted to do business with him, but they didn't. But he was such a great chef. He had such a great Italian restaurant. He had grappa, which nobody even knew what grappa was. Is that alcohol? Yeah. Bro, his, he had huh. shots of grappa that were 15 a shot. I don't know what that is. Back either. in 95. Ladizio's in Boulder back then was my fucking... I was in there... My wife fucking hated it. Really? <laughs> I was Why'd she hate it? Because I was there every minute I could be there. Oh, she hated that you were there. She didn't yeah. hate the restaurant. No, no, no. Nobody hated it. Oh, I see. Not she nobody. hated you were always there. Yeah, because it was my people. That, that, that That's my type of environment. They yeah. were crazy. Ex-cron- ex-cons? He was an ex-con, but his wife was a reverend. Is a reverend, Mrs. L. No way. Yeah, she has her own church in Boulder, outside of Boulder. And then the line cooks. Let me tell you something. There's a the bakery guy there, the guy that was the baker in the DGOs in 1991. Him and I still talk every two weeks. No way. That's the type of motherfucker I am. Joe Koch. He just sold his bagel shop in Mississippi. The whole thing. Did you work there or you would just go and hang out after work? Hang. Hang. 
I love that his hey, wife, I love that his wife is a go rapper. behind the counter and do whatever is necessary. Pick up the phone. You would help. Hold, him hold on one second. To be nice. Yeah. Okay, come here. Hey, it's for you, Joey. Aww. Go back there and give me a case of beer back there. This guy needs a case of beer, and I would eat like all the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> the mistakes. Joey, you want a lasagna? Fuck yeah, I take a lasagna. Joey's in the back like fucking up the food, so there's oh, like I'm lots fucking, of mistakes. Oh my God. He probably gave the chef a five dollar bill. Like, hey. <laughs> I'm looking for sausage and pepper. Oh, tonight. no, no. And I bring them weed. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's just a restaurant. I'm that guy that hangs at restaurants. I love it. I hung there. I, ha- I had a Chinese restaurant bowl that hung out at it. And I became French because they were gambling addicts. Were they so Chinese people? They were Chinese people. And I would torment them. They were Vietnamese, but they posed as Chinese. Same <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> they were nice people. Was this the one that you scammed? I didn't scam them. I never scammed them. I was friends with them. They, they, it was really weird. I was broke. I was a good customer. <laughs> And one day I ordered food, and I forgot that I had money. Like, I forgot where I had put my money. I was so high, whatever, the night before. And when they came to deliver it, I go, listen, you're not going to believe this. I forget. And they go, just drop it off when you have it. So when I was going through my thing from 94 to 95, when I was broke, I could always call them up and get food on the arm. Aww. And they would run a tab for me. And I would pay him like every two weeks on a Friday. I mean, it's like, Chinese food. How much could it have? It could have been expensive. Even if it was sixty bucks, whatever. Yeah. But I would get three sodas. Yeah. You know, after a coke binge. Yeah. <laughs> when you know you're starving. You know, when you wake up after a coke binge. You're ravenous. You want four fucking cans of coke? Yeah. Let me get an order of your hot and sour soup. Let me get two orders of egg rolls. Let me get an order of fucking crab rangoon. I have eaten the weirdest shit when I come down from coke. Yeah, it's the middle of the night. Yeah, and I don't want to go out. So no. I eat whatever's. One night I remember all I had in my freezer was frozen vegetables and I had no food. So I heated up a bowl of frozen Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts nothing on it it was like four in the morning and i was laying in bed eating them with my fingers like out of the bowl because i was so hungry and i didn't know how to get any food my neighborhood is too scary to go out after like one it's definitely like total hood you've been i don't know if you've tried no i've never been in your my neighborhood is like super sketchy because they were building a target in the neighborhood three years ago and then someone in the neighborhood said that target's too tall it blocks my view of the Hollywood sign, which this neighborhood is so far from the Hollywood sign. You can't even see it from any of the buildings. But this old dude complained. So the city looked into it and it turned out the target is seven inches above city code. So the city made target stop building it. They said, you either have to tear it down and start over or we have to change the laws. That was three years ago. That building is still empty. So now it's turned into like a homeless apartment complex. It's like a thousand homeless people living in this Target and it's in my neighborhood. So it went, I moved in like there's going to be a Target. It's going to be awesome here. It's going to get like more expensive. And now it's turned into the slums. You can walk to that <coughs> Target and buy drugs. And how far are you from Hollywood? I'm, I'm like two miles from the comedy store. I'm near like Western. In, in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, that's scary out there. It's so bad, Joe. There's tent villages. <coughs> was that your first place in L.A.? No, that's the thing. I kind of went backwards. Like, I had way nicer places. I thought places. you lived in Koreatown or something like that. It's Thai town. <laughs> Same thing, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> you live on off of Western and Sunset. Like, Western and Hollywood, that area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's crazy up it's there. It's so bad. But it didn't Western. used to be. It used to be, it was like gentrifying, and then it went backwards. It went gentrified for a while. Yeah. Western and Hollywood is where there used to be a Thai thing there. There still is. A little Thai center, like a post office, mailbox There thing. still is, a little Thai village. But in the back, village. they would do massages, and they had a Thai <laughs> place next to a restaurant. Yeah. That corner, that yeah. whole thing there. That's a great place, that place that did the massages and everything. Yeah, that little complex is good, but a few blocks down, it's like, I mean, seriously, it's... Walk down towards Western or away from Western? Walk down towards Sunset. So it's basically like Western and Sunset, like where the Home Depot is. Like that close, it turns from like nice, like Starbucks to like a tent city. No joke, like bonfires and trash cans at night. It's so bad. It's so scary. I've never been scared. I've lived in South Side Chicago. I've never been scared. And I'm a brown belt. Like, I'm tough, you know? I'm scared there now. I won't even walk at night. Do you mind if I ask you Why roughly what my- you pay for rent? 
just because like it, it, it's a, it's crazy you now like you li- like you think you're living in the ghetto and then it's like oh fifteen hundred. I pay fourteen for a one bedroom, but that's because it's rent controlled. When I moved in, it was thirteen twenty five for a one bedroom with parking, but in my neighborhood now it's like eighteen hundred for a one bedroom in that ghetto ass <laughs> neighborhood. Okay, so Hollywood was fucking scary when I moved here. It's still scary. Uh, guys, and you know, <laughs> I've been here with talk, telling you on this podcast, it wasn't, I, I wasn't scared like San Francisco scary at night when the 85 or New York City Harlem scared. No. It has a different type. It's different. It's different because you're not expecting it. It's and also... Things get weird. I, it's different because it's not scary, like violent scary, like they're going to rob you scary. It's scary because the people seem crazy that are on the street. But no, no, no. Hollywood Boulevard, the other night I went to Hollywood just to kill time. I did not feel like doing stand up. That's not to, like you. I had to meet our friend. I had to meet two people. Oh, yeah, that night. I had to meet a friend about a dog and yeah. another friend. About a dog? For, for a script. Yeah, he had to give me a script. So then I met a friend about a dog. <laughs> I had to go down there to pick up something good, so I might as well pick up something bad while I'm there. That's code word for I got to pick something up. Okay. What are you going to do? I got to see a man about a dog. About a dog. That's the code word like for that. it. And it means I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. Yeah. I just got to go do something that you, you don't want to be involved in. I thought maybe you were getting Mercy a puppy. I don't know. No, 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 no. I got to go see him. Even Mercy knows. Even my daughter knows. She does? When I tell her I got to go see a man about a dog, she don't ask. <laughs> I got. She's five. She don't ask. She knows that. What the first you, time she's like, "Yay, I'm getting a dog." Now she's no, like, "Oh, no, no, no. fuck." She, she knows not even to think like she's getting a dog. Right. It's just an expression. Like even my wife, who's as straight as can be, I can tell my wife, "I'm going to see a man about a dog," and she knows that Hilarious. I'm going to either pick up a gun, wep, uh, uh, drugs. <laughs> I'm going to see something illegal, and you God. can't come. Yeah. So that's what I went to see a man about a dog. So when I went down there, I went to see this do- old dude who actually had work for me. But then my other boy called me and he goes, does your boy still need that thing? I got it from him. I said, fuck it. I'll go to the bank, get your money, and we'll pick it up. I was going to take fucko with me. I was going to send him on the mission. And you were going to come see me. And he got scared. What yeah? happened? No, you didn't even tell me. Because I, this is what happens. He got scared. Because he, gets, he starts with his whining. What All is going has, on with you? You have no idea. And I even called him and said, Right now, I'm at Joe's Pizza having the best slice I ever had. I was going to bring you, but I didn't want to hear no I didn't even get an offer. That's the thing. He because says he whines off the bat. When I tell you to be ready in five minutes, don't worry where we need to go. That You might, might have to do something. First of all. You might have to do something. <laughs> he gets scared. Right away, he gets scared. He Why gets, do you get scared? I, what's going to happen to me? I need to know. I don't want to take no illegal drugs. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Well, that ship has sailed by now. First of all, can can, can we tell this weekend he gave me an expired edible, an expired chibachu. How can an edible expire? What was it? Because there's food stuff in it. Like, was it a gummy? What was it? No, it it was like a little tootsie roll. It was like two years old. It was like for fucking oddball. Which is chocolate. Which is I'm I'm used to that by now. But he would three or four years old. He called me. I I wish I could remember the day and I could look at my phone. He probably called me eighteen times. And every time he said, I'll be there in 10 minutes. I was ready. I get, you got me so high that I was like, all right, I'll get No, I don't want to do nothing no. illegal. I, I, I can't. I Why can't. are you scared? Why are you scared of things? You also wouldn't touch my friend's butt tonight. No, first of all, I would have. If you're out there, I would love to touch your butt. But <laughs> He doesn't want to me too you. He doesn't want to get convicted of me too. There's no conviction. Oh, my God. I'm going to get you me too P- Please do something. But... You say that I would have, and yeah, I'm I'm sorry if 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 he calls me and tells me we're I got the heroin that killed Michael Jack, like whatever he says. Yeah, I, I remember that. I get a little nervous. I'm not gonna pretend like I don't. It's not the heroin. It's the cocaine that killed that basketball player. No, you said Len, Len Bias. Len, Len, Len he Len does. Bias. He yeah. Has, every, every every person that dies. I got dies. the weed that Anthony Bourdain smoked before he tied the <laughs> Jesus knot. Jesus Christ, Joey! Oh my God. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> you think this is too soon? What, what about when he said it like fucking the night of? <laughs> I don't give a fuck. That's, I mean, it's all right. Oh God. <laughs> this is the this is the weed Kate Spade had in the bag. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love you. In a famous bag. Oh, right How God. fucking crazy is that? My hometown, <laughs> my buddy John Bender, who I dearly love, is doing something. They're doing like night, people's night out in North Bergen. It's August 9th. People's night out? Yeah, what is like that? You go to the parks and they, they, they have hot dogs and the people donate stuff. They're donating fucking spade bags at this. So all these people go into this barbecue 
and then Kate donated Spade Kate Spade bags. bags. Like, listen, They're I'm, popular, aren't they? Yeah, I want a Kate Spade bag. Like, I, I want know. 10 black dicks up my ass right I, now. Do you understand me? Like, if a black dick was walking down the street minding his business, <laughs> I'd rather have him knock on the door than a Kate ba- Spade bag right now. It wouldn't be for you. It would be Wait, for no, your but, wife or something. No, no I don't want a Kate why. Spade bag around me right house. now. It's a kiss of death. I don't it's want not that the kiss of death. Yes, they are. Yes, I don't care what they're worth. So a Kate per- Spade bag is bad luck right now. She doesn't even own the company anymore. I got to spit on myself because it's bad. It's like <laughs> fucking cancer. You know what I'm saying? It's like... I've never been like a, I've never been into that kind of shit. Like I have, I don't like to shop and I don't like to have a lot of stuff. He thinks she's mush that. now. Like the, don't, I don't want his money around my money. That, well, was Kate Spade really cool? Like when was Kate I, I, Spade cool? If I tell I you something, you're not gonna believe this. What? I didn't know nothing about it till she killed us. <laughs> how fucking crazy is that? That's how out of it I am. I don't even. I, I don't know nothing about I nothing. I was thinking of the wrong person. I was thinking of the model, that really skinny model chick. That's not her. Kate Spade's a designer chick. See, I don't even know. I don't pay attention. The Anthony Bourdain thing I actually felt really bad because I didn't look at the news all day till like 1 a.m. So I was like tweeting jokes all day. And then I saw someone even wrote me something about Anthony Bourdain, like rip Anthony Bourdain. It didn't even occur to me that he died. I don't know what I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? He's hot. I'm really bad about keeping up. I don't watch TV. Well, you know, I mean, listen, there's so much information getting thrown at you from all directions. It's not even that. It's because think I... about inform- how much information, yeah, is thrown at the human brain today. Is the human brain designed no. for what's going on today? You know, people getting brain tumors from cell phones. <laughs> today, I had a conversation with someone at my daughter's swimming, and he's a little old fashioned like I am. We were talking about the, the disadvantages of the cell phone and what the cell phone you know has great advantages. Yeah. But the disadvantage is the the, 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 the the biggest. There's a lot. You know what the biggest disadvantage of the cell phone is? What do you think? Like, I laugh because you're not living. You know what? You're so right. I don't even look. I realize. I laugh at people. Kate, I'm sorry I'm speaking no, over you. I am ashamed because people always go to me. Every two weeks I get a, I get hate mail. And it's always that I'm telling a lie, the stories, da 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 let me tell you something, my friend. I never, I lived life. Like, I was out there. I lived. When I was, that's why I get mad at Lee. You know, yes, it was probably my fault that Lee stayed out there Monday night, or Friday night in Bakersfield. But guess what, Kate? What else would he have done that night? He's got he to got have home, some adventure. He would have got home at 1130 with Diagostino, put on whatever stupid shit he's watching <laughs> on fucking Netflix, and gone on social media. And jerked off and gone to bed. True. You know what? He didn't turn it into an adventure because he didn't want it. He sat next to an African chick, and there was Mexican criminals on board. You know, whatever on the plane, on the fucking how bus, on the Greyhound. How am I supposed to turn the bus into an adventure? Interview all of them on live. It's, they it's, turn the lights off. It's one in the morning. It's it's so weird how Fair. we have forgot how to live. <laughs> like half the comics. If I tell, if I get down with you, like if you come over and we. Yeah. Stay up all night talking, like the shit I used to do on Greyhound in nineteen. <laughs> the nineteen, no, 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 not the shit I used to do on Greyhound, but my life on a Greyhound bus for three years. You know, Ralphie May used to laugh at me. I used to be embarrassed to tell other comics that I was leaving tonight. So I would go, they would go, "Where are you going this weekend?" I'm going to El Paso, and they go, "What time is your flight?" And I go, "I, I think it's either LAX at eight o'clock." And I would lie to other comics. Why were you taking the bus? Because I had to save money. I was only getting five hundred oh. to feature. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. F- yeah. Through five hundred dollars to feature. Yeah. From Tuesday through Saturday. Okay. So five hundred. If the, in those days it was eighty dollars each way on Southwest, and that's if you bought the ticket three weeks in advance. Yeah. So that's one sixty out of five hundred. What does that leave you with? Three forty. Three fucking forty. To then you eat, gotta buy food. Food yeah, and pay your bills. Taxes. And pay bills. Taxes. Pay yeah, no, please. Taxes. <laughs> and pay bills. So, you know, three forty, <laughs> but the Greyhounds dirty five fucking dollars to El Paso. At the time it was seventeen fifty each wow. way. Wow. How it's long a, is that ride? Eleven hours out of your Oof. life. That's yeah. not the two and a half. But what you think about it, enough. when you're a comic, you think of 11 hours. And what does a comic pray for in his life? Solitude. 
Yeah. That's the solitude you need. I would go on that Greyhound bus. I'd put earphones on with a disc man. I'd have a disc man. <laughs> and batteries. With fucking Christina Aguilera, that, the yes. first album. That genie and in the box. And I would get a notebook, and I would stay up all night, and I would roll a joint. And every time the bus stopped, they would say, this this bus is stopping for an hour. Go eat some. The food was horrible. I mean, it was, it was like eating puke, but at least I would smoke. <laughs> And then I started learning to bring my own food on the buses. But they I went. fed you? No, no, no. You have they have restaurants wait. at the station. They have restaurants oh. at the stations. So right now, you know, right now, like right now, if I would, if right now, if I got a call, right now, okay, it's, what night is it? Tuesday. Tuesday. It's Tuesday night. It's nine o'clock. Right now, the fucking phone rings. And they say to me, Joey, we have a gig for you tomorrow, a week that starts tomorrow night in Weed, California. And then from there it goes to blah, 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 blah. But you're working with a girl named Kay Quigley. If I say to the booker, what do I do? You know, like, what do I do? Like, I don't have a car. The booker would go, well, Kate's going to drive. She's headlining. You're going to open up for Kate. But tell Kate, well, you, Kate will meet you at the first gig. Yeah. So I would have to get myself to, to weed California. Gig. Yeah. So right now I would get on the phone, call Greyhound, 1-800, whatever the number was. I didn't know it by heart. Greyhound, probably. There was no, there was no <laughs> fucking, there was no fucking one eight. There was no Greyhound.com yeah. back then. No. And, no, 1-800-Greyhound. And you had to fucking call and go, hey, man, uh, I want to go to fucking weed California. And where's your destination? L.A., downtown. Okay, the, the bus leaves at 11. But now you still got to get there. You know you know where the bus stop is right around here, right? In the valley? No. It's downtown? right around the corner. Oh, that it's one on by Lake Yeah. That's right the, by the that's... big wangs, that, that big train stop no, that's right no, there? No, 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 oh. no, no, Big, but where NoHo Diner is. Down the corner from there. Down the oh. corner from there. It's the size of this office. It's oh, the size nice. of this office for oh, Greyhound. I, I you... almost did that one, but it would have taken two, I would have had to wait two hours in LA to get the bus to Magnolia. Yeah, it goes right there. Was right, you if you drive by there at night after the haha, you always see people standing in front of there. No way. So, what they do is they walk to NoHo Diner. So, the bus will drop you off. You have a three hour wait. Where do you go? That's why the NoHo Diner is open 24 hours. Oh, because people who take like the bus place. go to NoHo Diner. Yeah, but that's when you're a comic, like that's like it's like that Bon Jovi. Have you ever seen that video by Bon Jovi, Wanted Dead or Alive? Yeah, when he's on the bus and then the guy's playing the drums. But they show him looking out a window on the bus. Like, that was my life, guys. No, man. You know what? I did the same thing, not with comedy, because I've been very blessed that people like you will take me to feature and will get me a flight and a hotel room so I'm not taking a Greyhound. But I used to do, I think I told you, I used to MC events and I used to do like promotional marketing gigs, like state fairs and stuff. And they would give us flight money and hotel money but the gig wouldn't pay that much so i would save, save the, the money. flight money so i would this is actually i forgot i even did this i would rent like an suv and i would park at truck stops or sometimes if there was a like a u-haul truck for the gig like if they were bringing product i'd ask the driver if i could ride with him to the next stop and i would sleep in the back of the truck on those furniture pads one time i was working an event for dog food at state fairs, I was like talking about dog food on a microphone to like everyone at the fair before the country singer would come on stage. I'd have to do like 10 minutes of talking about dog food. And I would sleep in the back of that fucking budget truck with the dog food at truck stops. And I would just lock it from the inside like there was a way you could lock it and sleep in there for whole summers. This is the dream. And I would shower in the truck stop, but I would make an extra like thousand like ten fifty or something a week because i wasn't paying for hotels you ever go to those truck stops where you, it's like a fucking massage parlor you, Dude. you pay you go in there they even have a bed they have like a little yeah. room for like they have movie theaters yeah. and stuff in some of them don't they have like really nice ones some of them are really nice i actually like the pilot ones i'm not gonna lie pilot yeah yeah, yeah pilot, right? pilot 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 truck stops oh i like god. truck stops oh my god when i was a teenager i would go to truck stops <laughs> to write like when i was a kid i used to write music i played guitar i would go to truck stops in the middle of the night, this one I was like 14, 15, and sit and write and talk to the truck drivers. Like I always liked truck stops. I, I always liked drifters. Something about drifters, it's probably why I like you. Cause you have the soul of like a drifter. Cause you're probably always like hiding from people. <laughs> Do you ever think about being a truck driver? Like I, I, I used to think I would love it. 
I'm, really? I'm sure like i'm sure it doesn't pay great i'm sure it's not super good glam- but i like being by myself and all that so like i could very no, easily see myself I, doing I, it I, I, listen i have no qualms with i have a wife and a child now. right yeah you know i would love to be able to get in a car with you and kate and do the 24-hour drive to houston listen You've never laughed that hard in your life. We would laugh the entire Lee, you would laugh ride. the whole drive. You don't know what it's like to drive with comics and that camaraderie with people that you really care for, with two comics that are really cool. Or just people like, you mesh with. Like, I was talking to uh, Dean Delray, and he was telling me that he had a gig once in Bakersfield when he first started, and he had to drive up there with two comics that were miserable. Ugh. And he goes, it was the worst drive in my life. They were both telling me to quit. Get out of comedy now, and <coughs> that it's all changed. That you have to, you know, do all these things. But that all flips when you get in the car with people that you care about. It's hysterical, and if yeah. you're getting high and shit, like somebody's got to be sober. You know, the driver. Somebody's got to be. <laughs> that, was, like, that was always That's me. That's Lee. <laughs> no, that was me. I just smoke pot. That's not but sober. the rest of you motherfuckers. I like that you call that sober. Yeah, I'm, I'm sober. I'm just smoking dope. I'm in charge of the music. You, Lee's in charge of the directions. And you're in charge of saying, pull over after this one because I got to pee. <laughs> and, and sleeping at truck stops. And That's so fun. Oh, my God. I used to go. So this is the routing. This was the route I used to take. Josh Wolf turned me on to a website back then that you went out to the airport. You stood on line. You got to the window. It's something completely different now. It's like Jersey Mike's now. You ever go to LAX? I know Jersey Mike's. Before you go to LAX, there's a Jersey Mike's on Century Boulevard. Okay. On the right-hand side. Yeah. And there used to be a place that if you went there. By the hotel. By the hotel. You went in there. You said, I want to go to New York tonight. And they'd get you a flight for 100 bucks. What? But they treat you like a Puerto Rican. they lose your luggage. They'd fucking put Spirit you in the Airlines. Back of their it was Spirit Airlines. It was like somebody you bought tickets last minute. Huh. And I would take one of those. But how I would get back here would be by bus. Oh. So I would land in Newark. One of my friends would pick me up. I'd go to his house, take a shower, eat, and then we'd get weed, coke, I'd party. And then the next morning, he dropped me off at Port Authority in New York City. And from there, you could get all around the world on a fucking bus. It'd be fun if you did it with your friends. It would. And I would take a bus all the way to Buffalo. And then my friend from Miami, he was, this is how comedy works. I had a friend in Buffalo. No, I had a friend in Miami who his his, him and his brother were waiters at the improv. Yeah. His one, both good looking white dudes from New York. One sold Coke heavy duty. And the other one just snorted Coke heavy duty. (laughs) And he ate Chinese food, so I hung out with the one that snorted coke heavy duty. But he dated a Puerto Rican girl. So I would I would start, or I would take a flight to Miami and work two weeks in Miami. And then from Miami, I would take an Amtrak to Myrtle Beach. And How, then, damn, that's a long that's ride, fucking, too. That's fucking, that was brutal. Yeah. And then from Myrtle Beach, I would go to D.C. I would do Tyson's Corner, Virginia, Bethesda, Maryland. The DC Improv with John X was booking it on individual. Oh, would you nights. take buses to all those places? Buses. This is all be by bus. But the train is so much nicer. Like, it's probably way more expensive. But the tra- train. Train is expensive. It's almost as much as yeah, flying yeah. now. It's crazy. Amtrak, Amtrak is a rip off because I'll tell you why. Yeah, it's one sixty to get out of it. That's yeah. for a chair. Really? Oh, you want a seatbelt? Oh, <laughs> that's eight dollars. Yeah. Oh, you want a blanket? That's another twelve. Oh, you don't want to sit next to a Chinese guy. That's another $12. I don't think that's an option, actually. <laughs> oh, you want to sit on a chair that reclines? That's another $18. Oh, wait a second. The special tonight. Yeah. For dinner. Have you ever been on a, on a train? No, because the one time I was going to do it, it was the same as flying. And I'm yeah. Like, Fuck so that. You, here's how a train works. You ready? Yeah. You get to the caboose where they give you food. It's salad, soup, two egg roll appetizer, <laughs> a, a, a main dinner, and dessert. And free wine and coffee. So they want 30 bucks for the whole thing. You go over there and you go, listen, what if I don't want the salad, the dessert, or whatever? Can I just get the fucking entree? No. You got to get the whole thing. Yeah. So it was just like a ripoff for me. So I never took the train again. I don't know what he's talking about. There's trains from Boston to New York. 
done like those trains that are cool. Yeah, I've done that. Like well, uh, like what 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 Matt Fulton did when I worked Providence. He took a train right from Penn Station. That's like the Long those Island trains. Railroad. I'm not type. don't listen to yeah. him. He don't know nothing about like, Amtrak. The Amtrak right? like, but that's no. the thing is that, like Boston to New York is for buses too. I did that eight thousand right. times. I can't imagine being going like yeah. I even looked. Yeah. I even looked from L.A. to to Boston just once on Greyhound just to see and I think it's like two three days on Greyhound you looked it's like just to see what it was days. there's no express that's such a weird thing to look no no like. you know you have to there stop is, there and is like an express there is an express Greyhound yeah. LA to Boston on a Greyhound there is an express. that's so crazy though four fucking days I'm Jeez. just thinking like a fucking animal oh that sounds like you know who does that Eric Myers you know Eric Myers the little do you guys know him the comic yeah. he's from Florida kind of a scrawny dude super funny guys that's He's terrified to fly so bad. He's an addict, right? But he's sober. But if he flies, it's pushed him off the wagon before, so he's too scared. So he'll take a fucking bus from Florida to L.A. every time, back and forth. You have no idea. It's crazy. You have no idea what it's like to be on a bus. I've taken buses from Philly to New York the longest, like that. Yeah, two, four no, hours, six yeah. hours. I remember one time I went to New York on a Sunday. And my week at Hyenas. Yeah. In Dallas, started on like a fucking Thursday. And I made plans with a friend of mine. We're going to snort coke. We're going to do all these fucking things. And I put away all this money. In Dallas? No, in New York. Oh, so in when New I York. got to New York, I realized I couldn't get a hold of him. He had been at a different coke party for the night before. <laughs> so here I am all day Sunday waiting for him. I checked into a hotel room. I, you know, I, I, I dropped like $80. And I'm like, fuck. You know, Eighty dollars. I don't know what it was, so but I, at that time, this was like this is this is feature money, guys. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. No, I'm saying is, that's a good deal he, for a hotel. Guy, the guy I was going to meet is not even alive anymore, and he died in '99. So this had to be '98. I was oh, making four hundred a week then, yeah. or something. And I had a week. I had I found a, a flight out of Kennedy to Dallas for like ninety bucks. No, yeah. like no, like one sixty or something. But it was a tremendous flight, so I was going to wait the three days. And I'm in the city. I went into the city. I bought some Coke. I had my luggage with me, like my comedy luggage. And what I did was when I landed in the Port Authority, you could put your shit in lockers. So I put my shit in a locker. Wow. I tried to get a hold of a friend of mine. I couldn't get a hold of him. So I did what I usually do. I took a train. I took the eight train uptown. I picked up two grams, two toots. I picked up a couple nickel bags, a couple pe packs of rolling papers. I picked up a few lighters. I took an A train back to Times Square. I bought some CDs. And I said, you know what? I can either wait till Thursday, pay a bunch of money to stay in a hotel and blow all my money on Coke take with the these bus. guys, or I could take the Greyhound. It was the Express to Dallas. How not bad. I mean, you know what? Sometimes when I fly, you always everyone always asks if I sleep. I never sleep because I love I get more work done in a six hour flight on a plane where no one can bother me and it's completely quiet and dark than I ever do in like two days at my apartment. So if I was on a bus for three days, I'd probably write a whole script. Yeah, I would no, get that's so much shit done. That's why it's not that bad as a comedian. Yeah. When you travel, you're like, when do I need to be there? Thursday. Okay, I got two options. Yeah. I could fucking live there for two days, hand to mouth, and live in a budget or. Just be on a bus for two days. Yeah. It kind of sucks, but it's just a day and a half. Really. Now they have Wi-Fi on those buses, yeah, too. Yeah, they have Wi-Fi. It's not that bad. They have buses that are pretty pent up. Like, they have the Mexican bus to El Paso. That's a complete different bus. What's a Mexican bus? That's for Mexican people. It's run by Mexican mm -hmm. companies. Like an old school and they bus? Have music on. They have Telemundo. That with sounds TVs. fun. Yeah. Pinatas and they shit. They have Telemundo. Somebody sells tamales on there. I like that. They have that. But they also have the Greyhound, you know? I, I Like I said, I just... I I had I had a lot of long trips on Greyhounds. I had a couple sexual. Uh, I cannot imagine contact. meeting a guy on a bus on a bus across country a Greyhound and hooking up before we got to the stop. Like I can't even imagine that happening to me. But that would be my favorite story. I, I had I had I had a hookup on a plane one time at night when I had a girlfriend. No way. I got on a plane and I started making out with this girl on the plane. Next thing you know, I'm fingering in the blanket. <laughs> How did that happen? I have no fucking idea. Were I was you... drunk and hammered from the night before, and so was she. And she was with her friends, and she switched seats to sit next to me. Like, I've met her at the airport. Oh, you met her before you got on the flight? Yeah, like we met at the hotel, I could see at the that. hotel bar. I'm talking to her. I'm 21 at the time. 
That's amazing. I'm nuts. I met my ex-wife at an airport. No way. Yeah, I could meet women at an airport when I was young. I gotta start. I gotta start looking cuter because the, at the airports airport. were parties. What, See, what are you twenty talking? years ago, flying was completely different than what it is today in America. Thirty years ago. Yeah, there's no like forty pound pit bull on your flight and seat there, next. There was to you. no animals. There was none of that shit. Uh, uh, security was very lax. I remember having coke in a jacket one time. They told me to take my jacket off. And I remembered that I had the coke in like the inside pocket. Like it was like, a, yeah. like I had like a shirt and tie on. Yeah. And the guy was about to go in there and something made him like stop. And he goes, all right, go through. And that was it. Why would he check but, your jacket? But planes were different back then. I feel like then. coins or keys. Or planes were different back then. Like a red eye in the 80s meant red eyes weren't for decent people. Shut up. No. Really? Red eyes were for degenerates. You didn't turn the lights off on a fucking flight in the 80s and 90s on a fucking red eye. I wish they still have flights. How great no. would it be if they had adult-only flights and that they, were like R-rated? And, the, and, and people knew whoever was drinking. Hey, whoa, 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 what's going on? Hey, you like the red title? Buy him a beer. Next thing you know, I'm buying you a drink on the plane. No way. And next thing you know, the lady I'm sitting next to, she's a fucking boring fuck, so we're going to move up. <laughs> Listen, you might as well move over there because we're going to talk all night. And next thing you know, there'd be three rows. <laughs> nine, you know, there's not 18 people talking. And one guy would say, you got a bump? Yeah, let me do a Shut bump. Shut up. And bro, you have no fucking idea. No I remember way. one time being at an airport, getting delayed in Denver. This is when the last flight to Aspen was 9 o'clock. And getting delayed at, an airport, at Denver Stapleton Airport and then meeting a guy. And the guy's like, dog, I got power. And me and him, the bars would stay open till two or three. And we're at this bar just bumping. And we kept chasing <laughs> bars. Where can we, what bars open? You got to go to Terminal D's, got a bar. <laughs> Shut and up. we had the Coke hidden. And that's the same night I had like 12 ounces of Coke. Because I was going to New York to pick up Coke. And I would bring it to Denver. Then sometimes the flight would get delayed. So I put it in one of those lockers. In the airport. In the airport that would have those lockers. So I put the Coke in there. I'd take a gram or two out. So I could bump freely at the bar with, with somebody I'd meet. It's so different now. And then I would go back there. Oh, my God. You could never even find a locker. I remember my flight. One of the best flights I was ever on was the... Listen to me. Guys, listen to me. Lee. Lee is my friend. I love Lee. Lee gave me one of the best compliments he ever gave me. It's, it's, he didn't even know he gave me a backhanded compliment. But it meant the world to me. He said out of all the people he did business with, the only one that worked out for him was a guy who went to prison and somebody who kidnapped somebody. But everybody else fell apart. Lee knows how how strong of a mind I have. When I got on the plane, July 1st, 1985, when I got on that plane, I was headed to Colorado Springs, Colorado. Yeah. But because of a funny drunk black dude on the flight that we were drinking with, he talked me into going to Boulder. I went to Boulder. No My way. life is the way it is today because of a drunk I met on a plane that came from row 10 to row 20. Because in those days, you know what I do to you? Like I come back there and hit you and we talk for a little while. Yeah. In those days, you could stand in the aisles with a beer. Yeah. So I could talk to you. Like, what's up, chick? What's I happening? I missed that. That's what I want. What's going on with you and your world looking with your fine ass and shit? <laughs> Let me buy you a cocktail Is and that shit. how you talk? Oh, my God. In those days, I would meet people on planes. No way. So in those days, first class was upstairs. If you watched the movie Midnight Run, first class used to be upstairs. There was an airline that I went on one time that the fuck, there was a pig with an apple in its mouth. When you got on there, that's how strong. No first class way. used to be phenomenal. Perfumes, hand creams in first class. Shut up. In the bathrooms. Yeah. Flying has changed dramatically. Wow. But what changed the most was the party aspect of the flight. You know how many fucking flights I got on where 12 people were doing blow and drinking? Shut up. And you're in the middle of the plane. Ga -ga -ga -ga, people moving their hands and shit. <laughs> fucking people giving cocktail weight. What are those stewardesses? $20 yeah. bills. Like, keep bringing the fucking vodkas. Everybody was in on it. No way. Come on. Could you imagine being like, you said you let somebody you'd want, Kate. Could you imagine, though? You like, have you have no to idea how much like, the fly. Flying used to be a party. That would be so fun if they did that. Now, they should have adult only flying, planes. You can't, you can't fucking party no more. I was on a plane two years ago where, I, let's be honest, let's be honest. I'll be honest with you people. 
these people were being loud, but they weren't bothering everybody. It yeah. was six people who were just going to a bachelor party. Okay. You know what that's like? Nine college friends who are going to a bachelor party. Yeah, in a great mood. Who are now 29. Yeah. Five are married. Four of them have kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're out to they party. They finally got together and they were sitting behind me on a plane on a Southwest flight from Burbank to Vegas. Oh, and one of them short said, Where's minutes. the cocktails at? And the fucking pilot came back there and said, Before we take off, I just want to let you guys know that there's not going to be any. And the guy goes, Come on, get in the plane and give us a cocktail. The pilot turned around. And three minutes later, he came back with three police guys. No. And next thing you know, fucking they opened up the back door and four cops got in the back. And they said, who said that to the pilot? And they made the guy embarrassed, raise his hand. And they said, this is what we're going to do. You got two options. You get off the plane right now and we'll rebook you tomorrow morning. No. Or you could take, because the kids were like, we know our rights. And they started taking the cameras out. And they're like, we know our rights. And the, and the cop said, or... We'll close the plane. You could take the flight. But when you touch down in Vegas, Vegas PD will be waiting for you. What? And you're going to get arrested. And guess what else? You're not going to see the judge till Monday. What? So, just for asking for a cocktail from the pilot? Telling the pilot to go in the back Fuck. and fly the plane and get me a cocktail. That was a joke. And then and 20 shit. years ago, the pilot would have giggled and said, I see you guys are going to party. All right. I'll see you in Vegas. The pilot went and came back with three fucking cops, and they packed the fucking plane. The cops came on there with riot gear, dog. And the cop came on there, and that's exactly what he told them. The set nine people got up and got off the plane. That's exactly. I and get. They taped it and everything. I thought I was going to see it on Eyewitness News. Cop told him the truth. How long ago was that? Maybe maybe a year ago. No Jesus. way. On a, late, on a Thursday night flight. Aww. Was it the, the one last- that got delayed or something? Yes. The last time I went to the South Point, like this week I'm at the South Point. No way. It was a year ago. July 8th last year. A flight to year. Vegas? Come on. Of course they're going to be like they that. They have a TV show about it. Yeah. It, it they is... don't play. They don't play on I flight. get nervous to even tweet jokes about flights I when I'm on get, the plane. Talk, I remember getting on a plane one time when you had to walk outside first. Yeah. And I was doing coke. It was Sunday. <laughs> and I started doing coke on Friday. And it was the winter time. Everybody had a jacket on, and I had a thermal T-shirt on. <laughs> Steam was coming out of my body as I was getting on the plane. The stewardess was like, "Are you okay? I'm fine." I'm so, and I'm coked up to the gills, and I'm going. The plane hasn't even taken off, and I'm blasting. I'm getting up every ten to blast. People oh are putting God. their luggage away. I'm blasting. You're I had crazy. gotten up twenty times before the plane even took off. No. And then the plane started getting packed, and people started sitting next to me, and I couldn't get up anymore. And I started putting the thing down. I put the blanket on my head. <laughs> and I do a bump and then take the blanket off. And make Shut the up. Oh my God, I was You're such crazy. a fiend. I was the biggest Coke fiend. This is right before I got. Holy shit. This is 1986. People knew what you were doing, right? Listen, I had to. A, I would go to the bathroom, pull my pants down, <laughs> and make believe I was shitting. And I would hide. Like I wouldn't let my the mirror see my head. Because I thought there was a camera, a two-way camera. Shut up. Mirror. No. I swear to God, dog. Wow. You know me. I wonder and if I, there is a camera. In the yeah, mirror. you got to think twice. And I would do little bumps of coke, and I would jerk off a little bit <laughs> on the plane. And then I would wipe my ass, like, my, like, like fake it, like I was taking a <laughs> shit. And I would wipe my ass with a camera, would think I was wiped. Because when you're paranoid, your mind tells you this shit. And one time, that same flat, I got up, and when I walked out, I left the toilet paper in my pants and it dragged it <laughs> into the fucking hallway and somebody had to stop me and go, you got toilet paper. In your Ew, pants. no. Well, I was disgusted. I never I was a disgust. I never thought paper. about cameras in there. Hey, I've, you have I've no taken way. like I, hot I, photos in there before. I know you have. <laughs> I was on a plane one time with you, and I was going to go back there and say, okay, hey, take a picture of your pussy. Sir. Shut up. What the fuck? I'm sitting up here in mint by myself. I could bang one out. Shut up. <laughs> That's what mint is for. That's what mint is for. Oh, to my bang God. One out. I banged one out on planes before. Jesus, I have to. In first class? Oh, oh I rubbed one out like wait, a savage. Wait, I've done it in the did, bathroom. I was going to say, that That means he didn't do it in the bathroom. Oh, I don't go to the bathroom to jerk. Well, I pay a lot Shut of money up. for that plane ticket. Well, you're in like a little booth. No one yeah, can see you. Yeah, and you do a cappuccino style. I saw a guy jerking off in front of the Seven oh, Eleven under a blanket, but it was so obvious what he was doing because you could see the blanket moving up and down. And I pulled in. This was just last week. I pulled in, and it was so awkward because I was looking right at him, 
And he was looking right That's at me like we're waiting making for, total yeah. eye contact. You didn't show him a little tip? You didn't give him a little no. tip? <laughs> the fuck kind of Christian are you? You pop a tit out of that situation. <laughs> no. no, I was so freaked out. I left. <laughs> Yeah. I couldn't get out of the car. I stared at him for a minute, and I was like, I can't walk by this guy. He's too embarrassed. Can you I'm really like, do it cappuccino style, and like quickly enough so no one would see? Oh, on a plane? Yeah. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. Oh, Make believe God. I'm asleep and keep my head like this to look for the stewardess. And You're just insane. move my head cappuccino style. And at the end, you come in your hand, and you just keep it there like a little gurgle. And then you get one of those little <laughs> napkins. You wipe around your helmet. You <laughs> slip it back in your pants. And for a minute or two, you have that coming, like your palm in your hand. It starts to like, uh, what is that, homologize? It starts to get, <laughs> whatever the fuck. Homologize. <laughs> anyway, sure. Yeah, we'll yeah, just go with that. We'll go with that one. That is the either word. you take it with a fucking uh, uh, a napkin or you wash your hands. And not how, in the sink. how is it possible? I was telling you before the podcast that I did a podcast the other day and it was with a mom and her son called like Sex Talk with Mom or something. Uh -huh. And they watched a few episodes of us together and they were saying, uh, she said, I saw Joey talking about anal and how it, he doesn't like anal because he doesn't like if he gets poop on his dick. And she was like, is he vanilla when it comes to sex? He seems a little vanilla. And I was like, I don't think so. Last night he was telling me about when he came on a spoon and fed it to a chick somewhere. <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't call that vanilla. Why did you feed your cum to a woman? How did that happen? You told me you jerked off into a spoon and fed it to we her. coked up. What? It's just some. It was sure. a form of imagination. But how did you? Why did you? Even... She was such a dirty animal. Think of a spoon. Because Were you in the I kitchen? Just, I was just looking at her. Like, what can I do to her <laughs> that would be different than anybody else did to her? I want her to remember me for the oh, rest of my she life. She can't forget it. No, she and will. I went over there with a spoon and I started jerking <laughs> off into the spoon. Like, you know, like she sucked my dick. I, I, she didn't even ask me. Why do you have a spoon in your head? She thought like it was like a tune and four. You held like, it the whole time? Like, I just looked. I thought about <laughs> it. The whole time? Like, I thought ice about cream. it. I went over, and you put your dick in their mouth. They're sucking your dick on the Coke. And then when I came, I squirted some on the face, but I squirted some on the spoon. And she just looked at me. Like, she thought I was going to drink it. She didn't no. know she was going to take Have a Have you daily. ever tasted it? Once or twice, like yeah. <laughs> yes, not like a whole gallon, but Thank just to you. taste it, you know, what is, to what? make sure it tastes okay. okay not to stick that, no, just to see what the fuck come in when you're like I'm 12. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I was like 12 or 13. Oh. No, you see what it was. You can never say anything about hummus ever again. How dare you? Like you taste it. Like I would this, smell like it. Little, I never tasted it. Like a little finger. When you're 13, every guy has tasted really? it. Really? No, they don't. You never every did. fucking. I guarantee if you do an it's honest, hit me in the face before. If you do an honest survey with men. <laughs> 82% of men have tasted their own cum when they were 12, 13, the first one to two times, three high. times they came. You should taste it. Why? To make sure it's... Do you taste yourself? Yeah. No. Of course. I'm not, I don't taste it to see how it tastes. I taste it to test it to see. I don't give a fuck Back how it tastes. That's your job. You put up with this <laughs> fucking crazy job. glue that's coming out of my dick. I'm going to worry about what it tastes like. Like I'm a manufacturer of cola. I don't, I don't think give it, a fuck. I'm a manufacturer of sperm. <laughs> you it should comes care. Out, it comes out, you drink you it. End the story. What if That's it's it. really bad? Who gives a fuck? You can control it's it. Not, no, no, you can't. Yes, you can. You can By doing what? You change your diet. No, I don't yes. get it. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. I'm telling you. Listen, when you look at a dick, it's disgusting. And when, what comes out of a man's dick is even more disgusting. <laughs> Only one person could drink that shit. And it's you lunatics. <laughs> Nobody else could drink that shit. That is disgusting. Well, disgust. And I've had women who have looked me in the face and said uh, I could drink gallons of it. Oh, really? Like I've had women I wouldn't drink gallons. I drink it to be nice. Like yeah. it's a right. I don't think thing it's at do. once. I think they just drink it. You go it. like ah. Yeah, I play it up, you know, make you feel good about it. Yeah, you're a real you're But I don't know if I would drink it off a spoon, to be honest. If you're coked up with me for forty eight hours. Listen, I'll take it and fucking blow it into your ass with a flute at that point. <laughs> I'm a fucking flute. savage, yeah. I'm blow you're like, what are you playing Indian music for? This ain't Indian music. Don't you feel that coke going up your asshole? No. Oh, my God. Because I'm crazy. Like oh, that. my God. That cocaine shit used to make me fucking crazy. It's weird, though, with me with coke, honestly, because... If it's a few bumps, it makes me way hornier, and I'll do anything. It does coke. Every idea you have on coke is the best idea you've yeah. ever had, no matter what. But there is some point where I get too high, and I don't want to fuck. If I do too much, it makes me like... Well, it creeps you the fuck out. 
it does get you creeped out. I've had Yeah, that. and it makes your mouth dry. It's hard to suck a dick with a dry mouth, yeah. and I need a lot of water. And then it's like, if the sex is really good, I'm like breathing hard, and then I keep getting thirsty. <laughs> like one guy one time was so good, and I kept on being like, wait, I need a drink. And he was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, you're just so good. And I think I scared him. There's going to be guys giving you two bumps at all your shows now. Just like, it's crazy. Cause I've I cut had, way, I, way. When I first started doing cocaine, the sex was tremendous. The sex was from... For me, from 84 to like 80, no, from 84 to 95 and 96, the sex on cocaine was something with the right crazy girl. It yeah. was perfect. The girl where we used to roof each other in Boulder, like that one, she was crazy, that was great. And I was friends with her mom. And I'd have to face her mom the next day, and her mom would go say, did you guys have a good time last night? She didn't know we were having sex. She thought we were just friends. She didn't know that her daughter was a fucking animal <laughs> of the top degree. That's what I'm talking about, who I put the Coke on the spoon that time. And she oh. drank it like it was fucking emulsive of God. It was tremendous. But at that time, I wasn't getting hard on Z either, Kate. What do you mean? After three you in the morning. High. After three in the morning, there's nothing there. Oh, no. That's why I... It I, just shrinks. Sometimes that you can get When I become evil, I become evil to you. I start fingering you with four fingers, <laughs> whipping you, oh. all the shit you like, choking you, slapping you with balls, making you <laughs> suck balls, making you tongue my asshole while you play with yourself. Then I just say, play with yourself, and I'll sit there and watch you play with yourself, and I'll give you rocks of coke, like that scene uh, in the one with Jack Nicholson, and uh, what's that movie he did where he plays Whitey Bulger, the, 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 when he's getting high with the two chicks, and he goes, Black Mass. And he goes, no. Oh, wait, The Departed? The Departed. Oh, you ever see Departed? Oh, yeah. When he's doing coke with them, he throws the coke at them. Like, that's how crazy I used to get. I like all that craziness. That's when you get a girl to fucking, you know, suck her own pussy. And I can get you to eat her. That's like my thing true. was you to eat her while I fucked you from behind. Mm -hmm. So while you're eating her, I'm fucking you from behind. That is a package. That's like my life and dream. Then, and then and, I would switch uh, I mean, places. Oh. I would switch places and I would have the one you six string on with me and I'd finger the other one's asshole. I was <laughs> crazy though. I was crazy That's up like... to 95. <laughs> crazy. And then I met the stripper, and then she out crazy me. She's the one that taught me about smacking and choking and fucking throwing her across the room and calling her a fucking animal and <sighs> choking her and dragging her across the floor and pulling her. She wanted me to pull her by her hair across <laughs> the floor one time like a fucking caveman. Like, oh my that God. That's what, hot. I that's like that. That's what turned her on. And then I dated a Korean girl. <laughs> in Boulder that the only way you could have sex with her is by her ripping the outfits off. Her outfit or yours? You had to rip her outfit off. That is really hot too though. I'm talking about if she Like just, rip it apart. I like she has her. to leave in your clothes. Like she has to leave in like sweat sick pants. That's hot. I I think she I do she that had a me. gay brother. She had a gay brother and she would come in. I mean I'd walk in with her and she'd look at us and she'd go rough night last night. I would rip her clothes off, everything, underwear, socks, pants. She wanted you to rip her clothes apart. And I would leave her panties on throughout this whole thing. I would eat her pussy with the panties on. Guys love that. And then I would rip her fucking panties off. But then she charged me 40 for a bra one time because the bra was a good bra. That's hilarious. And I was pissed as a motherfucker, 42 for a bra. What, are you kidding me? They're expensive. You better start getting those three for $10. Because oh. Papa's coming home for Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is with me with that guy. Yeah, a lot of people like, people like when you rip their clothes off. It's different. And that's the adventures of life, guys. That's not being a me too. This is what happens when you choose a life of... Debauchery. No, what did you call us before? Us? What What you call You call us a name. Grifters. Drifters. Drifters. This is what we do as comedians. There's 15 to 18 percent of us that are grifters. There's this there's some gene you have inside of you that makes you want to travel. It's like a gypsy. See, I gene. found out something about you tonight. Like you've always been an entertainer. Yeah. At 14, but you've also always flirted on the line of. I could get raped here at a truck station. 
Like what, what? I always like danger, a little risk. Yeah, always. Yeah. I used to hitchhike when I was really young too. Like I just like always. I think it's because I always like doing what people said I couldn't do. You know, so whatever it was, don't hitchhike, don't hang out at truck stops, don't smoke, don't do. I always wanted do you to. You look back at it now and go, Jesus fucking Christ! It's crazy. Did you meet creepy people? Yes. Yeah, but I also met really cool, amazing people, and I think I learned that there's a lot more good people than bad people. Like in my in my experience, I met a lot of people that have really cool stories. Like, I remember meeting. I hitchhiked. I forgot about this in Ohio. I took a no. I picked up a hitchhiker. I picked up a hitchhiker. I was 16. I picked this guy up. He was a Rastafarian, black dude. He's from Jamaica. I don't know why he was in Ohio, but it was raining, it was storming, and I felt bad for him. So I gave him a ride. It's the first time I ever smoked weed. It was with that dude in my car in my little Ford Escort. He was like, "You got to try it. It's medicinal. It'll make you feel good." And he was telling me how they don't believe in modern medicine. And then uh, it was the first time also I ever heard Bob Marley. He played Bob Marley for me. I totally forgot about that. And then I dropped him off and that was it. It was totally safe and cool. No sexual nothing. Nothing. Now when you were 14 going to the truck stops, what was the scariest thing that happened to you with a guy there? Mm -hmm. Honestly, nothing scared me. I never remember being, but I was so unaware and I wasn't cute. I was never cute until I was like 25. So it wasn't like guys were looking at me. I looked like a boy. Yeah, let me tell you something. I could get people to pay me eighty dollars for Lee to suck their dick at the truck oh, stop. You understand drunk. me? They're not looking for looks at the truck stop. They're looking for meth and a set of lips. That's I, it. I was always there with like a couple other older kids. Okay, okay. You know? So you weren't there. I was by never yourself. by myself. Okay, okay. No, because I was fourteen, but I right. hung out with like kids that were seventeen back then. So they would drive and we would go there and we would sit. No, okay, that makes a big difference. Yeah. I'm thinking like I'm seeing a young girl. Not Pretty alone. 14 in, the, in, you know, in a world of, you know, what type of guy that's a man could really look at a 14-year-old? It's I mean, gross. I'm a fucking animal. Gross. And I've never looked at a 14 fucking year old. No. I'm, an, I'm an animal. That's there's, disgusting. There's a limit when you look at a young girl and go, wow. Especially back then when you could really, like, really tell that they were 14. Yeah, it's a little different now. Sometimes I see guys that I think must be like 30 and they're like 21. Like, I can't tell the difference anymore. Sometimes they're really young, you know? Like, even girls, you can't tell anymore. They all know how to do makeup. And, like, and girls out here get, like, their boobs done when they're 18. And I don't know. It's different now, I think. Plus, they have sex younger. I was talking to some kid the other day who was, like, 15. He's like, I lost my virginity when I was 12. Like, it's crazy to me. I was 19. How old were you the first time you had sex? <sighs> Because it was crazy. I had different things happen. Like I had like fake cousins that you played house with. That, <laughs> that you would like yeah, hook like up make with? Out with. No, make no, out no, with? I don't even know what I did with them. Fake cousins. What do you mean? Fake cousins like your mom and another girl went to high school together. And they considered themselves sisters. Oh, I see. And then you had kids and they had kids. So as you guys were growing up. You guys were considered cousins. Yeah. They prayed that you married their son. You know, when you were both four, they would go, oh, my God, someday they're going to be married. But that never happens. That's hilarious. But sometimes when you're at that age, you play house with your cousins. So I remember I had my mom was partners of the dry cleaners. And they had a girl named Evie, and she was really cute. And she was a little older than me. And that was the first time I ever saw like a hairy pussy. Like I didn't have hair and she did. And on Friday nights, we were allowed to watch TV till late in the living room. And she was the first girl like that, like told me like, well, look at this. And she showed it to me and <laughs> no showed way. me a pussy and you know, the whole thing. And I was like, I, I, and I can't tell you what I did with her. I'd love to tell you that I fucked her. I don't remember that because I was such a Catholic then. Yeah. Like, it took me a long time to accept the blowjob. It took me a long time to, like, even though I'm so, I always, I remember, even at very young, I was boy crazy, and I was always, like, I was always really horny, always. But I was raised very Christian, like, don't do it till you're married. And so even now, as much of a freak as I am, it's still hard for me to just have a hookup with, like, a random, like, it happens occasionally if I'm, like, fucked up partying. But even now, as open-minded as I am to, like, 
threesomes and I like to fuck in alleys and like crazy shit, but I'm super picky still. Like I don't hook up a ton. Although I totally forgot this just <coughs> happened. This is crazy. So, you know, I was a virgin when I got married. And right after my marriage, the first guy I dated was the only real boyfriend I've had since. We pretty much lived together, more or less, for a year. This super hot, like, model type guy. I haven't, we dated for about a year. He was too young. He didn't really want a relationship. I thought he was cheating. I shouldn't have been in one. I was still getting divorced. So it didn't work. We would fight a lot. And back then, I was so much more jealous. Now I'm so chill. Back then, I would get pissed if he was, like, out with a girl that he was friends with, anything. So we broke up. I haven't seen him in four, four and a half years or something. He showed up in L.A. the other day. I didn't know that he was even here. And he messaged me like, hey, I'm in town. We should get a drink, catch up. So I went and had a drink with him. It was so surreal because, first of all, at the time, he was the first guy. My sex with my ex, I told you before, wasn't right. Like, we shouldn't have been really fucking, right? So this guy was the first guy I ever really felt like I had hot sex with. But he was in some ways the first guy I ever really, like, had any kind of crazy sex with at all. Like, he was the first guy that I, like, fucked in a bar. The first guy that, like, he would pick me up when I would fly in. He would pick me up at LAX. And, like, I would literally be so hot to fuck him. By the time I got to luggage, I would be, like, dripping. Literally dripping. Like, one time I remember I didn't have underwear on. I was, like, dripping. And I would make him eat my pussy in the car on the way home because I couldn't wait. So I hadn't seen him. So now I see him. It's so weird because I don't feel any of that attraction. He's still hot, but I didn't want him. And we hung out. We ended up going back to my place and just talking till like 4 a.m. about the whole thing. And he kind of was like, I think you were the one and I fucked up. And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it was right. And he was like, I miss you. And I was just like, well, thanks. I didn't know what to say. And then he started kissing me. And I didn't know what to do because he's really sweet and nice, but I wasn't feeling it. But I tried to go with it to see if it would come back. And I started getting turned on, but I didn't want to fuck him. So I let him just go down on me. So, so... He starts going down on me and I'm like, wait, just so you know, I'm not going to fuck you. I'm not going to touch your dick. So if you don't, you know, if you're going to be too turned on, you should stop. He's like, that's cool. So he goes down on me. Dude, I don't know what happened since we broke up because I don't remember him eating pussy like that. Or maybe I wasn't as sexual, but oh my God, it was like the best I've ever had. It was so good. I started reevaluating my whole life and thinking in my head, like, could I maybe date him again? Should I move him to L.A.? Like, it was that good. And he did it for so long, so long, like hours. And then he kept being like, you sure you don't want to fuck, right? And I was like, yeah, no, don't want to fuck, even though I really, really did. But I, I just felt like since I said I wouldn't, I had to stick to it. So I didn't. So... I finally kicked him out at like 5 a.m. I didn't even let him spend the night because I was like, if you stay, we're going to fuck. You got to go. And I had to get up at like 8. So I kicked him out. So he left. Then the next night, I ran into my other ex, who I also haven't fucked in a really, really long time, who was the best sex of my life. And I was so horny from the night before from letting old OG go down on me all night. Even though I can't stand this other ex, when I saw him, everything in me was like, you have to fuck him. So I ended up going home with him, and I think it was the best sex of my life. I, I was telling you at the ice house. I've never had this before. It was so weird. Oh, OG must be pissed. If he hears this, he's going to be like, I said, like, so like OG he twisted the, the cap yeah. all night. And you bump into the ex, and he, next thing you know, he's banging you in the fucking muffler. But Unbelievable. The, but the problem is, he wasn't in the muffler, Joey. But the problem is, <laughs> OG, number one, doesn't live here. And two, OG was like a real relationship that, like, it was very hard to get over. Like, I really, really had a hard time. This other ex is one, like the girl you were talking about, that, like, we have hooked up on and off for, like, five years. Like, pretty much since that dude. But... 
we can't date because he's crazy jealous to the point of like, if you like my photo on Instagram, he'll call me and be like, you fucking Joey Diaz now? You fucking Lisa? Like every guy. So we could never date. Because even if I'm with him and I look at my phone, he's like, who are you texting? Who's you? Are you? So, but the sex, I mean, it's fucking like, it's so good when I masturbate. He's the only guy I think about still after all these years. We fucked on a trampoline. I mean, but here's the thing. That night, it's never happened to me before. It was like he didn't even have to touch me. If we were inches apart, I could feel I could feel him without him touching me. Chemistry's oh. real, guys. Dude, the, chemistry's real. So real. People do not believe in chemistry. I No, it was so I real. Had, I had a dear friend for years that I knew it. I knew why we were friends. The I chemistry? Knew, the chemistry. And I knew it. And I knew it was just and we did it. We were friends for 12 years. Yeah. But I did mean, you ever hook up? Oh, yeah. One night oh. my dick busted. Because, just once? Yeah, that's it. That's all we needed. Interesting. The chemistry was so strong between us. And you, you'll you see that in life you're going to meet women that you think or guys that they're the perfect package. That's they happened a, to me. They have a job. Yeah. They're responsible. But no chemistry. the science ain't there, G. And the opposite. Like, I've hooked up with guys. You know some of the guys I've hooked up with aren't that good looking, but there's chemistry. Like, there's so chemistry. for some reason. They, something about you. Something about them. You feel something. Something. There's people who are perfect for you. But like, so, your mother loves him. He's in law school. That's, he got yeah. all A's. He was a quarterback. And no chemistry. But you're like, this motherfucker's a sleeping pill. I mean, I've gone out with guys that are so perfect that I've tried to make them work, and there's just no chemistry, but they're boring. They're vanilla. Am I blocking his camera? No, you're good. Okay. But then there's like, the other thing, though, is I've read, and I kind of am starting to believe this, that if you feel that with someone, some theories are that that means they're toxic for you because they fill something in you that you need on a base level, which means you need them too Listen. much. Think about something. You could write this down if you need to. The people you've had the best sex with. The most toxic. Are the people you're the most toxic. Always. Because they take the most energy from you. So you always. can't move forward. Yep. You know, they always, there's a, there's a, one of the Wayne's brothers, Damon, the one that's on Lethal Weapon, uh -huh. the, old, the older one, years ago, he used to always go, how come crazy bitches always have the best pussy? And I used to, <laughs> at the time, I was dating a crazy bitch. And I had never experienced what I had experienced with this woman. People always go, well, Joe Rogan always says, you got, you were real. I was really terrible when I moved to LA. But when I stopped dating that girl, my comedy blew up. Oh, my God. Because she sucked the energy out of you. Madonna fucked Guy Ritchie over. Guy Ritchie's got no talent left because Madonna sucked his dick to all the talent left. Have you seen that movie with the guy from Sons of Anarchy? It's so bad. I watch it every time it's on HBO. It's a joke, guys. So but why do you keep watching it? Because I love the guy from Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> uh, my point is that sometimes there's somebody who's perfect for you. They fill every gap except the gap. It's true. The gap. I haven't found it ever that someone, the sex is super duper hot, and also they're actually good for me. It's never happened to me in my life, ever. But... It's interesting you said that, what you just said, because I swear to God, I said it to Jessica, my friend, earlier today. I said, since the last guy I dated, and not just him, but right around the time stuff went down and I stopped seeing that guy. Also, I cut, I just cut a lot of people out that I felt like were kind of a little toxic friends. Just Absolutely. Anyone that was dragging me down, I Absolutely. tightened up my circle, right? I swear to God, Joey, and you've seen it, I've told you, in the last like three months, Everything is starting to come together with my career, and I'm so much more creative, productive. Like, I'm producing more shit. I'm writing more. And I know that's why, because I finally just have this little tight circle of awesome people. And also, I don't give a fuck. Even though I hooked up with the dudes, I don't care. Like, I'm not trying to date anybody. I'm just trying to focus on, like, my friends and my career and me. For the first time, I've never in my life put me first, ever, ever. I've always put, like, my friends first. The guy first. And for once, I'm being like, yeah, I don't really want to do that. I'm just going to do what I you're want. You're a stand-up comic, which means you're on stage by yourself with a microphone. Yeah. Let me give some shout-outs. Real quick, Shari Robeck, Greg Reed, 
D- Dominico Salas, Ross Verastro, Cash Donovan, Jennifer Perez, Pilot Valda, Letitia Keaton, and my man up there at uh, True BJJ, Matt motherfucking Baker up there in Bakersfield running things. We added an extra show on Thursday night in Salt Lake City. Oh, yeah? 8 o'clock show. We had to add an extra show on <laughs> Thursday night. And uh, don't forget, Kansas City, uh, August 9th to the 11th, myself and Dean Dell motherfucking Rizzy, Woo! bitches. So it's going to be a hell of a fucking show. I got to ask you something. You said something very interesting that I just want to see what your take is on it. I don't know if this is a selfish thing or if this is something you need to do. Like, there's an agent in the business. And I was friends with this guy. And I swear to God, one day I looked at his number and I'm like, I'm never going to call this motherfucker again. And here we are seven years later. You know, he was a guy that got me independent work and I paid him 10% whenever he got me. Oh, he was your agent? Yeah, he was like an agent, you know. And somebody came to me about a year ago and said, hey, man, I bumped into what's his name. And he said, you stop talking to him. Are you mad at him? And I go, no, no, no. And something else happened. And then I pulled him aside. I go, bro, you ever have somebody you have to stop talking to because it's not getting anywhere anymore? And he goes, that happened to me recently. Is that something selfish that we do? Is it correct to do? Like, is this the way you were raised, Lee, or it's, it's, you were raised to do something like this? It's weird because it is different here, I think. Because, like, I went through something recently super similar. I had to basically break up with one of my best girlfriends because just over time I realized that it was becoming, that relationship was becoming more work to sustain than it was good for me. And it was more like I was putting as much energy into that as I was into my career. And I think though, everywhere else, like when I lived in Ohio, Chicago, anyone you met was kind of an acquaintance. They were a friend. Everyone was kind of, there was no real big difference because you didn't meet as many people. You didn't network. It wasn't this industry. LA is all about meeting as many people as you can and learning what they do and who they are. And everyone's like, how can this person help me? And what can they do for me? And so all the relationships, as much as you want them to be just based on friendship, there's always a slant to almost any relationship here. So when I first got out here, I remember thinking, I swear to God, I remember thinking, man, everybody I know who's really successful in this business is so fucking selfish. All they care about is themselves. They don't do anything back for anybody else. And I used to think that was like an asshole quality. But now that I'm getting to a point where I'm getting super busy, it's so crazy you brought this up. I've been struggling with it. I've been having to really ask myself, like, what is it worth to make it in this business? Because it does get so busy, especially you're past it. But the point where I'm at right now is like the top of the middle, like the hardest part of the grind i was I'm, there yeah because i was there you were there too you're I know, in limbo i know you're in the limbo well i'm just i'm so busy you're featuring and you're headlining it's not even that it's just it's just that i'm so busy right now but i'm i don't have quite the full team yet to help to handle help you. it right, right, right. You're, you're stuck in limbo you're in the limbo but, it's a weird limbo. yeah but the thing is that only the people above me like you know what that's like so my friends and the people kind of on my level or who haven't quite got there yet just think I'm blowing them off. I'm being selfish. So it's finally hit me. Those people I thought were selfish were just right here where I am. Now I'm here, so I get it. But I didn't get it till I was here. Like lately, you can see it on my social media. I'm barely even posting because I've been so fucking busy. I can't even look at my phone. And when I do, I got to answer 40 messages from like work shit before I can get to writing a joke or texting a friend back. So of course, all my friends are going to be like, She doesn't give a fuck about me. She doesn't answer me unless it's an emergency. But it's not. It's just I have to choose. Do I want to make it or do I want to have a million friends? Because at some point, I feel like you have to pick. And that's probably why it's loneliest at the top. Because you lose people on the way up that don't get it. Over the last three years, I stopped talking to 20 people. Yeah. That I didn't have to stop talking to them. I had to, to move forward. That's it. Because. Well, do you actively not talk to them or do you guys just drift apart? Is there a difference? There's a little bit of both. Yeah. Okay. There's a little both bit of both. Both for me too. There's a little bit of both. 
it's a little bit of both. And sometimes you know, listen, people drift. If they weren't really your friends, they drift. That's just the way life is. It's the truth. In this town, people show up as your friends, but they have a mitigating circumstance. They want something from you. Ulterior motive. And you get to see these people. You get to be around them. You get to see them. And when they don't get what they want, then you see how they change camps. And you see how quick it is to get their respect. And you're like, wow, they're doing all this when all they have to do is work. That was really hard for me, though, because, like, coming here, maybe it's because I'm from the Midwest or the way I was brought up. But, like, that was really hard. That was a thing I had to learn the last year, really, was, like, I saw a lot of people. I kind of, like, let them go to see what would happen if I couldn't give them anything. And I just saw so many people flip and I was like, wow, it's just, I never. I wasn't raised like this either. Yeah. I wasn't raised to be like this either. Today, yesterday, a friend called and uh, we have, you know, she lives in San Francisco. She used to live here. She, she came here to be a manager, but you know what happens here and uh, Good lady, you know, she tried to help me. She was hard. She had no heart, you know. It wasn't what she wanted to do. And she moved on, but we were still friends. I know her husband, you know. And she called me to say hello, and she was with somebody who, one morning, I had to stop being this person's friend. After 10 years, as a comic, that it just wasn't going anywhere as a comic. Every conversation was negative, and every conversation was negative in my direction. Because I was doing things she wasn't doing. Yeah. You know, she was mad at me. And to be honest with you, she was such a dear friend that before this whole podcast thing started, she called me one day and she goes, have you heard about a podcast? This is before I even met Lee. And I go, yeah. But she goes, I'd like to do one. Would you like to do one with me? And I go, I would love to do one with you because she's crazy. And I go, when do you know how to do one? And she goes, well, I, my friend taught me how to tape, and I could do it. And I go, okay, when do you want to do it? And she goes, would you come down here tomorrow? And I go, okay. And I called her three days in a row. And I go, she never called me back. And Ooh. I go, this is the same person I've always known. So I did the podcast with Felicia like six months later, and then she kind of said something to me one day. That was kind of weird. Like, you left me in the lurch. And, and I, you know when you want to yell at somebody and you go, I'm not even going to fucking go there. Yes. And then me and Lee did something, and she lived around the corner, and she showed up at one of our events kind of drunk, and she started a fight with a gay guy in the back room. Oh, my God. And then another time, she showed up at my house and caused controversy. That's bad, too, when someone's embarrassing and oh makes you look bad. Yeah. That, too. And this was going on for years, and I tolerated it because of our friendship. But now that we're in this type of league and all this stuff is going on, she called me one night, and she was like, uh, I'm at the comedy store, and they won't let me in. Who do these fucking people think they are? And I go, can I ask you a question? And she goes, what? I go, who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah, why would they just let you in? I go, in? who the fuck are you? I go, you don't even do comedy no more. She goes, yeah, but I'm down here to do this. I go, listen, that's not the way it works. I was at home. I go, there's nothing I can do for you. Yeah, you're not even there. And she, like, told me off on the phone. Like, go fuck yourself. And then one morning, I was having no surgery. No big deal. I'm going to go in there at 9 in the morning and I'll be home by lunchtime. Right? Like, I hadn't heard from her in like eight months. And right before I'm going to go into surgery, my phone's blowing up in surgery. Even the nurse says, do you want to check what that is? It could be an emergency and it's her. And she's like, I just read on Twitter, you're having surgery. I'll never forget this. She goes, oh my God, why am I the last to know? And I go, because you never called me back to do that fucking podcast, you fucking yes. dummy. <laughs> I go, do me a favor. Go fuck yourself. You're going to call me and make me feel bad because like she was like a fake friend all those years. So to make a long story short, like that was it. Like that was the last time I spoke to her. And yet today or yesterday, her friend called and she goes, she's here with you. Do you want to speak to her? And I go, why are you putting me in this fucking position? Yeah, that's super <laughs> awkward. Do that, yeah. Yeah. And I felt weird later on. I go, you know, and when you grow... Nothing bothers me more than when people don't grow. Yeah. Nothing I mean. bothers me more than when you befriend somebody and you're kind of colleagues with them 
and then you grow and they don't grow and they get mad at you because they don't grow. Right. Totally. Also, though, like I I'm kind of like a guy, which is why a lot of my friends are guys. But in the way I communicate, I am not passive aggressive ever. Like I say what's wrong immediately because I just want to fix it. Like if I had something with you, I would call you. And that's the other thing. You fucking talk on the phone. Anyone that won't pick up the phone and fucking talk to me at this point in my life, especially now I get why you're like that. Because you probably get a billion fucking texts a day and you don't want to read a paragraph and it takes so long to text back. It's so much easier to call. I can't tell you. I've cut people out just because they won't call me. That's it. If you are texting me more than three sentences, you have to fucking call me because I don't have time. So if they won't call and they're being passive aggressive and I don't know what's wrong, I used to let like try to figure it out because I'm the middle child. I would be like, why? What's wrong? What did, what did I do? Why, why aren't you talking to me? Now I'm like, all right. I give up and I just cut it off. Like everything. It's making me lonelier because I have less friends, but it's making me happier because I have better people. Well, that's the thing. That's the, that's the decision you have to make. You know, I still talk to my friends from childhood. Yep. I make it a habit every yeah. day to talk to one of them. Like today I had to yell at George. <laughs> you know, that's my favorite when I yell at George because he's coming out here to do that fucking Comic Con. Oh, he, that's cool. And he torments me to go down there. The chances of getting me in San Diego, you got a better chance of me fucking making a noose and hanging myself. It's the worst drive. It's the worst. You'd have to drive. fly. Yeah, and it's take the, the train. Drive. Well, that, like that. That's what it's I'm kind of. Going down there. It's kind I don't, of. I don't I've have never been though. I would love to go to that. It's kind of twofold because I didn't really experience it too much before I started doing stand up because I, I would have friends from work. I didn't really have too many friends out here to be honest. Um, but it is kind of weird being in L.A. just because everyone who comes out here, it's the vac. It's like the dream vacation for them. So I had a friend out here the, last week. Who Friday at 3 p.m. texted me, come hang out with us in Hermosa Beach. And thankfully, I had a, a show to do, so I said no. But they just like, they think that it, you're just having fun all the time, so you could drop everything and go to Hermosa. So that's tough. I, I haven't really had to break up with a friend yet, but it is like I always, now that I know I've heard these stories about other comics, I am a little bit, I do put up a little bit of a wall at the open mics. Like uh, there's some, there's some people that I'm friendly with, but I also I I'm very cautious around people now from hearing I all these too. stories. I used to just fucking talk. I would just fucking talk. I, I believed the everybody. I, not throw shade, just be open. Yeah. Like the way I talk to you, I would just I would tell the truth to everybody and share my feelings. And I forget if it was you. Someone said to me, "Oh, I think it was Dice." He said, "No one is your friend in this town. Remember that until they prove it." And I was like, that's that's a terrible way to be. But it's kind of fucking true because it's happened before where I've shared too much with someone and then found out later, like, they weren't really a friend. And now I'm like, fuck, I never should have told them that story. Well, when told you tell that. somebody something and they kind of, like, use it against you, and you're like, that's the creepiest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. I read these little people send me shit. A couple weeks ago, somebody posted a Reddit thing. A guy, it was beat up Joey Diaz week, remember? He posted <laughs> a thread on Reddit that was brilliant about it, like that I rob people and that. No way. Yeah, someone goes into the Facebook group for the podcast and is like, I don't like Joey Diaz. And even the people in the group were like, why are you here? Well, like, they're so stupid to even go in there in the first place because all your fans are going to just, like, destroy them. You don't even have to say anything. Here's the thing, guys. Forget the fans. Forget all this shit. When you decide to get into the comedy business, way before I decided to get into the comedy business, like, I thought about it, and I'm like, people are not going to like me the same way I don't like such and such. Like, when I got into comedy, I watched a ton of comedy. We all do. Yeah. We've all watched yeah. a ton of comedy. And you, since you've never done it, you're a fan of everybody's, right? Like, since you haven't done it, you're a fan of everybody's. But there's two or three people that you don't really think much of. Right. Okay? That's natural. 
That's yeah. me as a comic. Yeah, it's when just like in, music. You're not going to like right. certain songs. When I got into comedy show, I decided right then and there, right then and there, when I got on stage in 91, that people <laughs> were not going to like me. That's good that you did that. This I is never the craziest even thought of thing. That. I never even thought I of that. I thought about as I was bombing all those years, because I was in the Midwest. Yeah. Doing pussy eating jokes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that this must have gone great. Been, yeah. <laughs> this has not been a, a fucking action adventure lineup. I never even thought about it. Yeah, and I was I'm, in Denver. And and I'm, I was I'm in the a, Midwest. I'm, I was a guido. You know, they don't know I'm Cuban. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. No. I'm just a guy. Remember, I cut my teeth in Wyoming and Montana. It's amazing. And Ogden, Utah. And, Oof. you know. So I was just like a big fucking weirdo. So either you liked me or you didn't. So when I go on YouTube and... Oh, I hate reading the comments. And I read a comment and somebody doesn't like me, it doesn't bother me. I could look you in the face and tell you that I'm already programmed. Because I know as a, as a human being that if we all liked vanilla, it would be a boring fucking world. If That's we all totally liked true. Florida, it would be a boring fucking world. That's why I like outspoken people. When somebody yeah. goes, you know what? I really don't like Las Vegas. I'll look at them and go, why not? Tell me your reasoning. I'll know if that person's faking the funk. Yeah. Like I remember one time being at that diner, 101. I love that place. I love that place. The coconut milkshake with yeah. the eggs for breakfast. Fucking delicious. <laughs> I'm going to go in there late night and eat. Aren't they open late? Yeah, until like three or four. Three or four? Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I remember one night having a conversation with a waitress there. She goes, if you ever left here, where would you go? And I thought, I'm going to be old someday. Maybe I'll go to uh, Vegas and get like a residency. And right away, she started with that Silver Lake lingo, that self-corporate environment of capitalism. How can you even want to be an artistic how can you have artistic freedom working in Las Vegas and the capitalists? You know, those people what? I can't. I don't want to be around those fucking people. That's true. Those are the people I can't stand. Yeah. Me neither. Uh, give me a reason. You know what? Every time I go to Vegas, I see, I feel disparity in the air. I do. I do. I feel. I do it a lot. I of feel places. the money need. I feel the need for friendship. I need people who really go to Vegas. Who really think they're gonna fall in love. That does happen. I feel it in Vegas, and I feel so bad. I like going into the cheap casinos in Vegas where you can <laughs> still smoke in the whole casino, but, like, the ventilation's not that good, like the, the old ones. And you don't even have to go to old Vegas. Like, even on the Strip, there are still a few. Yeah. And it's so different because you can tell looking at the clientele in those ones, those are the people that are there because they either need to make money. It's a more desperate clientele. It's not the tourists that are on vacation but that is like the best people watching because those are the people you're talking about that are like either old guys trying to just make enough to buy some hot girls a drink so they can maybe get fucked or a little take a little money to the strip club or old ladies with white hair playing like penny slots. Like I love watching that. See, that's the one that I don't like is the older women at the slots. It makes me feel sad. Like the, I feel like they're spending all their money. Really? But I do like there's always... The time that uh, you brought me to the UFC, like I stayed an extra night, went to like a really seedy casino. It's just that like, that's why I fell in love with blackjack. Not even like the winning, but just the like com camaraderie at the table. Like these older guys were like, and my mom has a saying that every gambler almost won. Like, so I, whenever I hear someone saying stuff like that, I think of her. But he had a story like they wouldn't let me make a bet. And I would have won ten thousand, and he was going off and telling the story and and yelling at the at the dealer that he fucked him last night, but like in a funny way, like it's it's yeah. Everyone has a sad story of like how they almost made ten grand, dude. The first time I ever, I was old. The first time I ever actually gambled in Vegas because I was always like afraid because I'm so addictive. I was scared to bet, <laughs> and I walked in a casino with some somebody I can't remember who it was, a friend. A guy, we walked up to a war table. You know oh that game W A R War? He put down a hundred bucks. Guy goes, W A R War, whatever. We won. So a hundred bucks. Just like that. I was like, oh fuck, this is easy. So I immediately thought everybody just wins in Vegas. 
So the whole rest of the week, I tried to make money and I just lost, I think I lost like a thousand bucks or something like that, which at the time was a lot. I was like 25. I never gambled in Vegas since then. I don't gamble when I go there because I'm so scared that I'll get hooked and lose all my money. So if you see me gamble, it's with someone, it's because like I sat at a table and some dude handed me money, like then I'll play, but I'm not playing with my money ever. But I have won twenty dollars a few times with other people's money. At the How table. often does that happen? How often are you in Vegas, and an old dude just hands you five hundred dollars? If you're a girl and you stand at a table where a bunch of guys are playing long enough, someone wow. is giving you money to play. Oh Definitely, it's fucking crazy. But not a lot. I mean, guys will just buy you in and give you a few chips. It's never happened to me like in the movies. But I'm also usually dressed in like flannel and a hat because I just did a show or something. I'm never like in a hot dress. Maybe it'd be different. That'd be a good experiment. I don't know. And I never go to the um, baller tables, whatever those like high high. Why level. wouldn't that be the place to do it? There, I have so many empty seats. Because I'm always when I'm in Vegas, I'm always working. So it's always I'm always in like comedy clothes. I'm never like when I go to the fights, I dress up. I love that. You work a lot, huh, Kate? I really lately am like nonstop. It's good, good for you, man. And it shows. It shows. I see it. I see people talking. You get on there. You, the other day you post a picture of you with those little baseball titties. With, baseball. Some, other, with some other chick. With the, a bikini, the bikini on. one. I looked at it and I'm like, the fucking internet's going to collapse today. Oh, the pool? The pool party? I don't know what the fuck it was. You and a bikini. The, the black bikinis. With that little bony monkey. Oh, that. On. Yeah. You look beautiful. Thank you. But I'm like, she's busting the fucking computer today. But you're always the doing, you know. Titties. It's weird because I try to post less sexy photos now than I used to just because, like, I, I know I'm, I want to be more seen for comedy. But every once in a while, I'm like, fuck yeah, it. Yeah, fuck with I'm going to be... I'm going to be old soon, you know? Why Who not? Who gives a fuck? Yeah, I still got... I say one day I'm going to look back and go, God damn, I wish I could wear that, which I still will, Don't I Don't show your pussy yet, though. Not never going to show. That's the I've never done topless, either that's one. That's the age. That's no. the, now you can do topless at this age. What the fuck? No, I'm, I'm going to wait. pussy for the last week. That's the last card right there. I'm going to wait till I'm 80 to call show it, the pussy. Call it the Harvey Weinstein. That's the end. <laughs> no, you're always working, man. You hustle. Yeah. You out every night, you do Brian Monarch. I mean, you do fucking everything, you know? And like I told Lee, you know, I respect that. When I see Dean, I know who's faking the funk, you know? I know who's staying home. You see it. Yeah. And I, I know who complains and they don't do the work. And then I see, you know, that, that I, I came home and told my wife that time. I go, you know, I just bumped into Kate. She just did the weekend in Connecticut. And she took a 6 a.m. flight with me. She didn't sleep, neither did I. She's going to go home, sleep, and do a 9.30 spot at the store on a Sunday night. I go, and I asked her, I go, why are you doing that? She goes, you can't pass up a spot at the store. And I go, that's why I like Kate. Oh, thank you. That little statement right there when you go, you can't pass up a spot at the store. But then, this is every time that the comedy store sets their schedule up, I watch the retweets. And I see fucking, oh, here we go again. It's macho night at the comedy store. Just these angered woman comics fucking bitching about the lineup at the store. And you never, and you're not even a regular at the store. And you get 20 spots in there a week. And fucking, that's just the way life is. Yeah. So I, I give fucking people respect who deserve respect. It's that easy. Like, I'm sick and fucking tired. And I have been sick and fucking tired. Like, my phone stopped ringing in 2007 from the misery calls. Those I used to call those misery calls. You know, after I did The Longest Yard for two or three years in Spider-Man, yeah. I would get misery calls from comics every day. No. What do I need to do? Ba -ba 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 -ba. You know, did Joe Rogan call Adam Sandler? Just the dumbest shit. I never know what to say when people ask me what they need to do because I don't really know. I just worked. That's it. That's it. Work. I, know. I never. But people ask well, all the time. What, well, what do I do? I don't fucking know. That's how I lost a lot of those friends. I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. That's they, how you lose They would them. be like, "Well, you that's get so you many spots. Them. How do I? How do you get those spots? You know what I used to do to get fucking spots when I first started? I swear to God, this is the truth. On Facebook, everybody posts flyers for every shit show in town. Anything, a bar, a coffee shop, whatever it is, right? Every flyer I would see, I would look at who produced it or was hosting it, no matter where it was, and I would add that person as a friend, and I'd message them, 
every couple of weeks and just go, hey, if you ever have a spot, if you ever have a spot. And I would get up any fucking spot in town I could. And that's how. But the other thing is I was just nice. And I never asked for shit. I never asked you to do this podcast ever. I never ask anyone for anything. I just fucking be nice and wait. That's it. But I think a lot of people, like, they just, they don't want to do the shows that no one's listening. The biggest mistake you make in my world is ask me to do this podcast. That's what yeah, people don't Yeah, I know. Do. I know. Because you're just telling me, you're just telling me not to put you on the fucking podcast. I want to see something. Yeah. I got to see you doing something on social media. I got to see you doing something, man. Yep. I, if I don't know you, how can I put you on this fucking podcast? What are we going to talk about? Yeah, like it's different if it's someone I've had that they want to promote what something. What am I going to talk about? Yeah. But even promoting but I mean, if the they... podcast. Go on the fucking radio. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, I yeah. don't mind people telling people dates. I do it all the time. But like all that other shit, like when people hit us up, and I'll tell you, even in the sponsor department, like I was getting hit up to do movies and maybe bring like the third actor on the list to the show. Yeah. And I thought about it. I told that company, no. Not for what they wanted to pay us and what we were going to do. I was going to compromise the audience. Exactly. You can't. I don't know these people. Yeah. I don't know nothing about these people. For the, for the little bit of change I was going to make, I was going to lie to my audience about a movie. That's how or I Or a am. fucking guy that, I don't, I don't know these people. Yeah. That's how I am with ads on my Instagram. Yeah, like I, people are like, "Hold our shake, take it." I'm like, "Fuck that!" If send it to me, if I like it, I'll think about it. Yeah, no, that's no. It. people think like it's. Uh, I can't wait to get like Emilio. Emilio's been on the podcast a thousand times. He's gonna be on Mayans. He's the, one of the leads on Mayans that starts on FX or uh, September fourth. Oh, nice. I'm gonna have him on. You know, John Bernardo. I hope to get him on in August. You know, these are guys that they listen. I've known them for years. No. I know. It's yeah, different. I just don't want to bother them. I don't like bothering people. You know what's but... a good example is like I haven't done Rogan. And like every week, maybe five or six people will tweet about it. And I never even, I would never in a million years like reply back, oh yeah, I wish, or even like it, or ask What Joe. about people retweet that stuff? I feel like it's Joe's show. If he wants me, he'll ask me. Why the fuck would I bother him or he's engage? The type you know of what guy I mean? That he'll walk in the store one night into the original room. Or into the main room and you're on stage killing. Yeah. And you say something that makes them laugh. And that's it. You got them. I know yeah. Joe. I know Joe for 20 years. Yeah. And I know exactly how his mind works. And Joe is like so good to me and always gives me good advice. And like he's great. I actually think Joe is so sweet. I think he's so great. But like that's what I'm talking about though. Like I can't imagine when people ask me even. I'm like, what? Why you? It's it's so awkward because they put you on the spot, and then what are you supposed to say? How many podcasts do you have now? Well, Date Fails is the podcast. I love your Date Fails. Yeah, the Date Fails is cool, but the one I'm so stoked about having you on is the Hollywood Pool Party. Which, so I used to do it as a live stream. The so way so you do far your... Monday, I have a ten thirty in Hollywood, and I'm waiting to hear back to see if this lady could. She wants to see me at one in the Valley. But Mercy doesn't get out of school till four. Just so let me know. I would have to blow up. I asked my wife. My wife went. Wait, ten thirty in Hollywood, and then one in the Valley. Maybe you could come do it in between. Something at like my that. Place. Something like that. Dude, it's so. But ten thirty is a pitch, so I don't know. Exactly oh, that might last what, a while. I don't know what it's gonna fucking entail. Yeah. This all came about. We can in the play last by two ear. Days. You're special. But Mercy, I want you to tape it. So I got mercy on it. Yes. So my wife just bought a fucking thing. She went to Big Lots, and the lady goes, you know, we have a sale for her, and I have an extra coupon from the manufacturer because my wife goes there a lot. Yeah. So my wife goes for $79. This was perfect, Joey, and it comes with a blower. It's a pool. It's a fucking a slide. Is it an inflatable pool with a slide? Oh, my God, I have one, but with it's not. With a basketball court. Yours so has she, a basketball court? She has court? a basketball court. So you fucking, we got it in the backyard. I'm so excited. With the sprinkler that comes out. So you stand on the side with the microphone, and if it's really hot, the sprinkler hits you on the side. I was going to say, Joey spends all day in this thing. Listen no, to dude, me. I have booms. We can do I it fucking, in the pool. I went out there the other day with her. She was out there. It was like 100 degrees in the backyard. Shut we up. did it. We had a fucking blast. Her and I and my wife put the whole fucking thing together. My wife was back there. 
put in fucking things, steaks to drag. So excited! <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, no, you no, no, understand. we don't fuck around. We have to do it at your place then. We yeah, have that's to. what I said to you because yeah. Mercy had to do it with you, and let her be the star. And you can't curse. No, you can of wear course the bikini not. And she'll do the bikini with you and the whole fucking deal. And oh you might my well god! Get a little girl on there to give you some flavor. This is. Literally, it's like my favorite show. When I brought I've you guys done. over the other night, I, I did She's that for so a reason. Cute. She knew it. Like I said, I said she goes, "Daddy, you have to work." I go, "Yeah," and she goes, "Are you gonna come back early, or do you want me to sleep in your bed and watch the bed for you?" <laughs> and I go, I'm coming back early. And she goes, "So, are you gonna have your friends with you?" And I go, oh, "Lee's gonna be with me," and she goes, well, "Why don't you bring Lee back?" And why don't you have a party here? So I go, why don't we just have an after party? <laughs> and she goes, yeah, let's have an after party. My wife's like, what are you guys talking about? And I'm like, well, I have an after party, like at 10.30. And my wife is telling her, like, she's going to be sleeping. <laughs> and I'm like, no, she's not. Mercy will wait up for us. We'll have an after party. And Mercy's like, Lee's coming. We have to get pizza. I go, Lee's coming. <laughs> and so is Kate Quigley. You never met Kate. She's probably going to show up with a bikini. I, I had her all. Shut up. <laughs> and my wife is just shaking her head. So we walked in there at 10 o'clock at night the Your other night. Your poor wife, man. She was like half asleep. She I felt so bad. She was half asleep and the baby's <laughs> fucking straight up. And I'm telling the Huey, Dewey, and Louie. We we're watching the Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And I told the, the cousin Stewie's doing 10 years for fucking bond embezzlement and she got pissed off at me she's like don't say that to me about stewie there's no stewie there. she was also in her pajamas and you were like you gonna make us some cocktails or something like you brought up cocktails and she's just like let it fly she didn't even respond yeah, to yeah. she doesn't respond she to me because she knows think... i'm breaking her balls she's so funny and then she was mad they put the wrong name on her on her doll she made at school she said they wrote hannah my name is mercy not hannah she was all she is so cute she's so sweet though I mean, she's like you when you're not podcasting or doing comedy. She's got your like, whole, you know what I love about you? I, I fucking, this is, I swear to God, when I saw you at the airport in New York at JFK, when we were on that same flight, every time I see you from a hundred, hundred yards away, you have the most shit eating grin on your face. Always, always. You always have a big ass smile. And that's what it is about you. Like you tell dirty jokes but you're just fucking like you just exude light like warm like you're just so what, warm what is it that at the end of the day do, are we really really angry about nothing when you really really think about it we're all, so lucky all the anger i carried in me in my 20s which some of it was due to life I still had anger in me in my 30s, still had anger in me in my 40s. And in my 50s, I still have this anger in me. And just recently, I woke up one day and I go, you know what? Listen, here it is, plain and simple. I work eight times a fucking month. And I leave my house six days a month. And I make a living. You have okay? a good life. And I get to go to my daughter's events. I'm not missing meals, but I'm not getting rich either. I'm not Louis C.K. or Kevin Hart. And guess what, guys? I don't want to be. You don't need to be. I don't want to be. I wouldn't want to be I am either. very happy. You know, I am very happy coming over here with Lee. You know, Lee's employed. This is this is a dream come yeah. true. When I, when I used to go to the open mics with Lee and I'd sit there, I'd, I'd look at these guys and I'd go, this was me. 25 fucking years ago sitting there dreaming about yep. performing at the comedy store the improvs the laugh factories getting flown in yeah you know i didn't have any there was no tv there was nothing people were like well you know uh, listen all i want to do is be fucking funny i didn't give a I'm fuck about booking way. rooms i didn't give a fuck about Headshots. I didn't give a fuck about that. <laughs> I knew at the end of the fucking week, if you couldn't do the job on that stage, this whole thing's in vain. If you're going to be smoking mirrors, because there used to be a fucking uh, an oil commercial years ago, and the motto for them was, you can either pay me now, or you can pay me later. That's never left me. That means you can either do the work now, or you can do the work later. Yeah. It's up to you, but you're gonna do the fucking work. You have. To. So roll up your fucking sleeves, take the bad look off your face, yep, and prepare to eat shit for ten fucking years 
before you see anything. I've been here 12 years. Yeah, man, and I prepare feel like to eat shit finally. for 10 fucking years yeah. before you see anything. Who the fuck are you? Who owes you anything, you fucking sack of shit? Prepare to be here 10 years it's before true. anybody even says hello to you. It's fucking 10 years. <laughs> and then maybe, maybe if you're fucking lucky, somebody will fucking talk to you. It's true. It's fucking true. This man. isn't, you know, the other day, uh, Brenner sat in that chair. And I've been thinking about the statement I made. And you know what's fucking crazy that you really think about it? And you're like, you know what? I remember going to the fucking Laugh Factory on a Monday night. Yeah. And being a six-year comic. Six-year comic. But the last three committed. Like, I don't know what you're talking right. about. I don't know. Right. Netflix. What's Netflix? Pussy. I know cocaine and comedy. Yeah. And how to drive a fucking car to the next gig. That's all I fucking knew. And I went to an open mic. I went to a Latino night at the fucking Laugh Factory. And I saw a kid by the name of Johnny Sanchez go up there. Oh, I love Johnny. And do a joke about no parking in my parking. Now, whenever you see Arabs in, in fucking Europe, they're jumping up and down. And the, at the end of the fucking week, it, it's the same cousin to the guy in Glendale. And then fucking, I forget who else went up. Um, somebody else went up that, that was brilliant at the time. But then Pablo Francisco went up and leveled the room. Yeah. He was doing voices and he did the whole cast of Seinfeld huh. in Spanish. And guys, I sat there and I was like, oh my God, I'm moving back to Seattle. I'm not coming down here. I'm not ready for this. Listen. There's a thousand people, Kate, and you have to think about this. There's a thousand people that are sad reality. They're a lot more talented than you. They're a lot more talented than me. And Lee, they're a lot more talented than you. I'm sorry to break that news to you. <laughs> no, sorry I, to I break agree. that news to I you. I would agree All with you. All three of you guys, including myself, just people who are fucking really talented out there. Yeah. But you want me to tell you what the real talent is? Thick skin. That's so true. That's the time. So true. I've seen it. I've yeah. lived it. I've been here. You can tell me every story you fucking want. Yeah. I've seen, you know, I've seen it all. I've I'm seen sure. it all. You know, I also saw Dave Grohl be a drummer on Nirvana. And now he's one of the greatest performers in the world on Foo Fighters. Amazing. He sat there and played it out. Yeah. He did his time. This is all about time. The talent isn't that you... Or a fucking prodigy. Oh, well, he's a 21-year-old prodigy. Right. Look at him on stage. Bitch, it takes a lot more than being a prodigy Tenacity. to survive at the fucking comedy store. Tenacity. So just remember that. The talent is not playing the piano and singing and jumping up and down. And Yeah, you're going to have talent on some people are fucking phenomenal on fucking Twitter and Facebook and social media. They're going to get 200 million views. But the talent is... Us continually driving to whatever comedy club to do that midnight spot. Well, you got to love it. And you got to love it. Because even if you get Kevin Hart huge, at some point, Kevin Hart's slope starts to go like this, and then it might come back like this. And like, I mean, it, it's always up and down no matter how famous how you famous get in this are. business. So if you don't love it, like that story I told on here about Chappelle wouldn't go to the store on a Monday night at 1 a.m. If you don't love it enough for that, then why are you doing it? Because the fame, the money, like the level of fame that you're at, people know you because they're a fan. They like what you do. They don't know you because they read about you in a tabloid. They saw a photo of you out with Kim Kardashian. They know you because they like you. I'm not, it's work. not my gig. But my I mean, gig is not to go to parties. My gig is not to hang out with nobody. I don't want to know, but nothing like that. My gig has it. always been to you're a comic. I never told nobody I'm a director. Lisa Yat. Seven years you've been around me. You ever hear the word producer come out of my mouth? Not really. I'm a fucking dirty comic bitch. <laughs> That's From what I'm saying. From day one to oh, day two. You know what? I'm no better than you, motherfuckers. Remember the day I went on I went on an audition a few weeks ago, and I called Joey the minute I got out. Do you remember I called you, and I said, this was the worst fucking bullshit audition. that I had to go in there, and the premise of the show is they play a comedian's bit, and then they have another comedian act out the bit. But I had to lip sync the bit like I had to fucking they played the jokes on tape and I had to lip sync it like I was lip syncing a song. 
but I didn't know that's what it was going to be. So halfway through, I stopped it and went, wait a second, I'm lip syncing her jokes. People know I'm a comic. And they were like, right. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. And I just left. And I called Joey and was like, listen to this. And he was like, fuck that shit. We're comics. We don't fucking audition for that bullshit. We're comics. That was, to me, I was like, that's why I fucking love Joey. Because you just got it. There's rules. Well, why would I do that? This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Lip syncing someone else's jokes is retarded. It's not even acting. You weren't even reading the lines. You were lip syncing. This is the dumbest shit. I wish I could save the show, but I won't. The the, the problem is we forget. In the middle of everything, with the parties and the tabloids and the ETV, sometimes we forget that we're just dirty comics. And we're just here to replace somebody. And that's all. That's the only self-importance we have. I'm a dirty comic. But you know what's nuts? Is lately I'm so passionate about work. Not just, like, not just, listen... Like, the pool party show is my favorite. Like, I fucking love doing it. It's dumb, but it's fun. It's funny. Like, people tell funny Hollywood stories. And last in the last week, I think I did, like, ten spots, two of my podcasts, like, three of other people's. I'm trying to sell a show, so I had a few meetings. And I did five episodes of the pool party or whatever. I was literally not sleeping. I mean, I was sleeping. How long is the pool party? Ten minutes? We filmed for 25. We cut it down to like 15. Yeah, it's short. Great for short. you. Yeah, it's perfect. Idea. It's perfect. And it's all, the point of it is to break the illusion that Hollywood is glamorous. So the whole point is like, you take like a job, you book like the longest yard, but then you think of like the moments on that that were like awful or like a terrible audition that you thought was going to be amazing. And it turned out to be like a shit show, like the guy jerked off in the casting room or like just shit like that, that breaks the illusion that Hollywood is like, we're all so, it's all fame and makeup and red carpets. And you're like, no, nah, bitch, like two blocks that way next to the Oscars is like Tent City where like guys are pissing on each other in the middle of the night, you know? So, um, but my point is I wasn't sleeping. I've never been busier, but I love everything I'm doing right now so much that like I went to a party the other night, one night. And it was a big Hollywood party. Like, John Mayer was there. Like, all these celebrities were there. I swear to God, Joey, I walked into this party. I was there for, like, half an hour. I was like, why am I here? I could be editing this fucking pool show right now. I don't give a fuck about this shit. I'm leaving. And I just called an Uber and left. And that was the first time I ever was like, all I really care about right now is what I'm making. I really don't give a fuck about who doesn't like me, who talks shit, who anything else right now. Nothing else. But I'm so happy. not the reason why. Yep. Yours is just to do or die. That's it. But we have forgotten this. As Americans, we forget this. Yours is not the reason why. What are you asking questions for? All you got to do is keep showing up. Show up and do what makes you happy. What's That's coming it. up for you? What dates you got? Oh, thanks for asking. Uh, well, Tuesday night, I promise Sam, Tuesday night, I'm at the Comedy Store for Comedy Chaos. A sick okay. lineup. Um, but I'm going to Connecticut not this weekend, next weekend. So it's the 19th through the 21st, Mohegan Sun. Uh, comics, yes, yes. Comics, so you've done that place, right? My girl, right? Deborah Hubs is going to see you. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the one that wants you. to have a threesome with me? Yeah. Ah, oh, fuck. Well, um, maybe. Send me photos. Tweet me photos. I'm due for some sex, you know? Other than my exes, I hadn't fucked in like two months. So, and then anyway, I got August 1st through the 5th, Minnesota, and then I got Sunnyvale, uh, Roosters. Have you played that joint ever? Rooster Years T. Ago. Let me know how it is. Rooster yeah, T. Yeah, I heard it's Sunnyvale. good. Sunnyvale. Yeah. It was really popular when I moved here. Really? And it went through different ownerships, so I don't know what's really going on up there anymore. Me neither. But it's like a two-hour drive, right? Four-hour drive. I think it's more. I think it's like five. Five. I'm going to fly. It's really, really hip, I'm not driving. really cool neighborhood, Sunnyvale. I heard it's dope. Yeah, and I've like never it, done that but area. There was an owner for for a while. They were just doing clean comedy. They've gone through oh, so shit. yeah. They've <laughs> gone through so many different things over the year. I really don't know what's up. You know, I heard so it's I heard it's good from a few people. We'll see, but I'm excited just because I haven't headlined that area yet, like San Jose ish area. So and then hopefully we'll go to Cleveland together in October. I hope so, hopefully, man. you know, no, no, you're yeah. in, you're in. That would be dope. When we do uh, hilarities on motherfucking Fourth Street. I would love with Kate that. Quigley's homecoming and shit. 
And uh, I got to just plug the photo shoot with Holly Randall because we're trying to get money. That's the one we're talking about, right? The yeah. one that you put up and you had your little titties. And oh, that. no, we haven't shot it yet. The one that we're doing the Kickstarter for. So Holly's like a legend in like the adult world, but I won't be nude. But Holly's like one of the only female directors and photographers who shot for Playboy and stuff. And she wants to shoot me. But she has this idea to do like a sexy clown, like a clown that's like really like kind of gothic and sexy, whatever. So we're trying to raise money for it. And then we're going to do like really cool implied nudes. So nothing where I'll be naked, but I'll have like my boobs covered, but I won't be wearing clothes. Kate, I can't advocate that. Why? You told me to do it. No, I can't. Nothing naked. No, you can't advocate that shit. No. But they're going to be like artsy, like you'd hang in a museum, like Playboy. The other hand, then you're going to go, let's go. (laughs) If, I you're can't. Gonna, if you're going to show that pussy, show me that clip. I can't. You don't dress Joey. up like a clown. And, Joey. Jesus Christ. No, you know the clown saying? thing is going to be like Harley Quinn, but like black and white. It's going to be well, cool. I want to see you in a Harley Quinn. Nobody wants to see you in a Harley Quinn. Yes, suit. they do. They Joey, don't you're ruining it. Asshole, or but, they don't want to see nothing. But we're going to let people come watch. They don't want to come watch. And what? hang out. Come on set. And come watch you naked? No, come watch the photo shoot. No, listen, if you're naked, people want to come. If you got clothes on... Well, the implied nude part, there will be... I will be naked. How how do they imply that you're nude? I'm going to be totally naked, but I won't show my pussy or nipples. So it'll be like those side angle shots where it's like there's not clothes, but you're naked. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like pregnant women take to showcase their bellies. What did you think she was doing? What did, like, what did you think that meant? And the clown one is going to be cool because I'm a comedian, but they're sexy. It's supposed to be like a comedy hot photo. Listen, I took two expired fucking <laughs> cheap and shoes plus the fucking you did? hot candy. Sure, you know me. Just My tell the people to support it. Jesus Christ. We only right, need to raise them. a little money, and they get to come watch if they live in the area. Really? Yeah. So you don't let people come watch you? They have to turn in their phone at the fucking door, and yeah, that's the highest. Are you doing a background check? No, what we're gonna have security. Fucking, I'm gonna have security. What if you're taking pictures and put the little nipples on, and some guy runs up, takes his dicks on Louis C.K.'s on you, shoots a little. As long as he's standing there. far enough away where it won't hit me, I don't really don't give a fuck. I'm very chill. This you is know, don't, don't invite that. That's like when you said you wanted to be homeless for a summer. You can't invite. I still kind of want to try that. This is why I love you because you got a sense of humor. You take everything for what it is, and the more I see you, the more you fucking grow. Last week when I was on Rogan. I was talking about this thing I go to. The people are great over there in U.S. Cryotherapy. Oh, I want to go there. Uh, it's in uh, U.S. Cryotherapies in Ventura Boulevard. But I was talking about a thing that they have called Novithor. And I took the thing for Rogan and I checked it out. And this fucking thing does a lot, man. It decreases inflammation. It improves lymph draining. It improves blood circulation. increases energy. promotes cellular rejuvenation. Reduce obesity as part of a diet and exercise program. And for performance and recovery, improve muscle strength, reduce post-exercise soreness, decrease. This, this is fucking crazy shit. So if you live in the area here by myself or Bert or any of us or even the Hollywood area, I think this is the only place they have this Novator bed. And it's U.S. Cryotherapy in Studio City. Call up. Does it get hot or anything? Or is it just you feel just, like it's just like lying just down? It's warm. I and mean, you sleep like a baby at night. It's fucking tremendous. you got to take me there sometime. I've always wanted and to I try love, it. And I love all that shit. You know me, though. I've I never done either. The cryo thing either. If you go to U.S. Cryotherapy and tell them I sent you from the podcast to church, so I'll probably give you a couple dollars off. I think if you go in there the first time, one time, it's like 26 bucks. Oh, that's not bad. No. And I want to try it. Just to test yourself. Yeah. Just to really fucking, it's your head too. So you oh, go in there with earplugs on, you go in there with gloves on, your underwear, they give you socks. What about your eyes? That's got to be crazy. No, your, your eyes, eyes are, are fine. fine. Okay. You get your favorite fucking song. It's negative 200. How long are you in there? Three minutes and 30 Jesus seconds. Jesus Christ. It is tremendous. How cold is it? Couple, Do you know? I don't know. 150 degrees. I used to oh, surf oh. in the winter, and that fucking water oh hit your God. face. Oof. So dead. You, you go in there, and it starts, and the music comes on loud. I put Madonna burning up. <laughs> or I'll put Madonna physical attraction where it makes me dance and shit. And I throw punches. <laughs> anyway, listen. The podcast is brought to you by my favorite, on it. They got a product called Alpha Brain, which gets you fucking sharper than a motherfucker. And it's their flagship. If you don't like the product, they'll give you your money back and they don't want the product back. That's how much they believe in Alpha Brain. This is, I'm talking about Onnit. Onnit does not fuck around. 
I've been messing around with Ana for nine years. I've known Aubrey for years. Rogan's turned me on to some of their products. I go to jujitsu. I drop one of those Shroom Tech Sports. Right? Do I not do that fucking jujitsu thing with you guys? The yeah. Conditioning. You, Hector and was I, saying today I'm, that you weren't like you don't you don't, you never sit down like in between rounds. No, I don't sit down. I, I that's Ooh. that's the character. That's the character. You don't sit down. You breathe it out, and you walk around, and you maintain, and you breathe, and you think about clarity. You think because that's what Belise taught us when she came on the podcast. That breathing clears your mind. You know, it's it's so many things that you learn from breathing, but that's not what we're talking about. Go get the fucking shroom tech. Go to honor.com right now and press in church. Bam, and get ten percent off your order. Number two. You want a gi, you want fucking shin guards, you want boxing gloves, you want, when you go to Muay Thai class, you want the best, you got to deal with Fuji. How do I know? Because I live Fuji, I breathe Fuji. Their gis in my world are tip-top magoo. People are giving me other gis, people are giving me other gis from other companies, they're nice gis, but nothing serves the purpose like a Fuji gi. That fucking Superito, that Sakai Point Two. Even just the all-purpose gi that's $96 or $89. Listen, go to Fujisports.com right now. You're looking for a tough gi, you're a big guy. You get an A5 or an A6 from Fuji. They also have rash guards. Do yourself a favor. Go to Fujisports.com right now and press in. Church. Bam. Get 10% off delivered to your house plus to help out the podcast. All right? I want to thank my queen, the queen of the church. Quake. Kate, quickly. Quake. I'm fucking high as fuck. <laughs> I'm I love you, fuck. man. I love I, it's you funny. Too. I could talk to you forever. Oh, me too. I like you. You're one of yeah. my all-time favorites. You're the and best. Me. And the people like you. I just don't want to put you on every other week because people get pissed off. But I wouldn't have always, anything to say. You're always welcome here. Thank you for your stories. I love you. You motherfuckers, they had an extra show in Utah. So we got a Thursday night show. Bring the fucking bongs. And then me and Dean Del Rizzi are rolling into <laughs> KC Mo at the Improv. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, October 9th. No, October, August 9th, 10th, and 11th. Are you, are you fucking kidding me or what? <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Thank you very much for watching the show. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. Thanks, Scott Cunningham, for running the uh, Facebook page and everybody on there that shows love. Listen, we're a fucking family. I'm with you. You're with me, and they want to be with us. I want to thank Kate Quigley. And I want to thank my main man, the Christ Killer, for always making it happen. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you motherfuckers Monday morning, tip top Magoo, ready to rock. Let's do this shit, Lee. End the Woo! week off fucking good. Let's do this shit, Lee. What do you got?